Midwest PBL Baseball today brought to you by Sherwood Brewing Company, another country music night at the ballpark. Our first of two here today featuring the West Side Woolly Mammoths and the Utica Unicorns. Jeremy, out alongside Brennan Shabbat to bring you the call here today. So glad you could tune in for either both or our first game here today. Some good pitching on the radar, some good arms throw here today. There's a couple new guys on the West Side Woolly Mammoths. A lot to get to, but uh, first we kind of talk about yesterday and what the day was. Yeah, well, yesterday was the Birmingham Bloomfield Beavers signaling that they are back and they are ready to play an 11 to 3 win over a very good Hoppers team and a Hoppers lineup that has been hot lately. And it's really fun for the Beavers. They've now won, I think, five of their last six and four in a row. Um, they've kind of made it a huge jumble between second and fourth place behind the Unicorns who are 12 and two. The Beavers are now seven, nine, Hoppers six and 10, and these Mammoths five and nine today. So everybody's kind of close uh, except for Utica. But I was just talking with Josh Hines, the assistant manager for the Beavers on why his team is hitting well. And he said, well, our new guys have really uh, improved our lineup and they, they came to play uh, out of college. Some of the guys they got from the showcase, some other guys that they've signed. And I, you know, him and I kind of laughed and said, well, the whole team is new. They've got three guys uh, in their roster, as far as position players go, that were here at the start of the season. Cameron Collette, Ryan Sullivan, and Travis Ford. Sullivan just re-aggravated that hamstring. Travis Ford is still coming back uh, with that eye injury. He should be back soon. But right now their whole lineup is essentially newcomers and the guys are still really contributing. They, they brought in a bunch of really nice new bats, guys hitting for power, aggressive on the base pads, uh, not a lot of swing and misses. Um, and it's been really fun to see because, you know, for a little bit there, six or seven game stretch, we thought, man, the Beavers might get left behind the rest of the league and they've really turned it around. Trevor Jackson has really bolstered their starting pitching. Their bullpen has always been one of the best, but their starting pitching has really come around with Jackson on the bump, toe in the slab, and it's been fun to see. Well, that's the thing, I guess, with all the changes we've seen, the showcase, some guys moving in and out and cut in and additions here in the league, the lineups are starting to kind of settle in. We see a few more tweaks here today, which we'll probably get to throughout the broadcast. But that's an important piece, and we've talked about it with you know some of the managers and the coaches as well. They don't want these guys to be uncomfortable, and sometimes you know they're quizzing them. Hey, where are you comfortable in the lineup? Where did you primarily hit? in college leading up to this point or in pro ball in the past because you know they want them to to have the most success they can based off where they are yeah and i think we saw the unicorns they did it right at the start of the year and maybe got a little bit lucky um their lineup came to play right from the jump they, they had guys you know they've got four three or four guys hitting above 300 you got to get to like eight or nine on their roster sheet before you find someone hitting below 260 you know they came from the very start of the season ready to play and that's why they've jumped out to this huge lead 12 and 2 on the year so far by far the best team that we've had in the league the hoppers sputtered to start they changed their roster a little bit they've gotten a lot better since the beavers kind of sputtered to start they changed their roster recently they're back and kind of getting into the swing of things. The Mammoths were one of the better teams at the start of the year. They've slowed a little bit as we've reached beyond 10 games. We've already seen some few roster changes that will take place here today. We might see more in the future. Not sure, though. That's pretty much just speculation. But if they can kind of get some production from newcomers and they can turn it around, it'll really be a, a three-team race to see who can catch up to Utica you know we've got four teams in this league you kind of hope that two can be over 500 at, and you know at all times but with the way the unicorns have dominated at the start of the year that's just not the case obviously the beavers are getting close they're two games back the hoppers just four games back of the 500 mark but yeah we should see this mammoths team hopefully kind of start to produce a little bit more they started the year pretty well just not a lot of power in the bats you know there, there's not a lot of RBIs and home runs. Um, not too many guys hitting above 300. They just really need to start producing at the plate. They've got a really good pitching staff. They've got a really good defensive lineup. Um, they don't make too many errors in the field. It's just about, you know, stepping up to the plate and being ready to hit, and that's really what they, they need to do, and they've got another chance to do it tonight with two games. You talk about the two newcomers to this Mammoth roster here today. Brian Leaf is one of them, kind of a more seasoned professional. He comes from a couple independent leagues in the Pioneer and the Frontier here to the U.S. PBL. Just looking to you know, gain more of a starting role and more consistent reps as he's been behind some guys. And a guy you're familiar with, Bischoff, as well, the Michigan State closer. 
Yeah, Kyle Bischoff was the uh, transfer to Michigan State last year. Had uh, four seasons at University of Toledo, uh, and then joined Michigan State last year. Got to cover him a little bit in some of their games. Really fun guy, perfect embodiment of a closer and what a closer is supposed to be. Uh, he'll get in, and his mindset is throw the fastball through the catcher's glove. You know, he he knows he's only got one, maybe two innings if it's a six-out save. Uh, and so he's going to get up there, and he's going to rear back and fire it as hard as he can. Very uh, excitable guy. Showed a lot of emotion and, and flair on the mound, and that's what you want. Reminds me a little bit of Michael DeSanti for the Hoppers, who's you know a boisterous kind of guy. And uh, I'm really excited to see Bischoff here at the professional level. He, he dominated um, in, in the closer role at Michigan State, and I think he can do it again here in the USPBL. As for the pitchers here today in game number one, it's Greg Lokanen on the other side for the west side, Wooly Mammoth. And um, the name that escapes me is Adam Riggleman in making his third start here today. Got both games kind of mixed in my head. Um, but these are two guys that we're intrigued to see face off today. Yeah, Lokanen, um, one of the guys who we, we know a lot about, was here last year. We've seen him a few times this year. Still looking for that velocity to tick up, but his curveball has been phenomenal lately. You can just see the spin out of his hand. He's really got that thing dialed up. Not only does he have that tight spin and, and big movement on it, he's starting to locate it too, which if you can do that, you can be really dangerous. We've seen so many guys swing and miss on that curveball. We're going to see it again today. Um, he's one of those guys, uh, something we talk about a lot for doubleheaders, can any of these starters go all six? Can they help their bullpen and help their pitching staff for later in the week? See if they can get a complete game in six innings. Lokanen's one of those guys who can. He went five innings the last time he started a game for the Mammoths. He can probably push it to six. Um, that should be interesting. Uh, again, excited to see that curveball. Riggleman, we don't know as much about. He's looked good in his few starts. He's only had two, like you mentioned, that we've seen. A newcomer. Uh, we don't remember if he was a showcase guy or not, but he came around the showcase, the college showcase time, to join this Unicorns team and kind of bolster their starting rotation, which really hasn't been a, a rotation at the start of the year. They've kind of just gone back and forth. You know, we've seen Nick Cardinal, who's been a starter. We've seen him do some bullpens. Uh, Muntaner, who's starting today in game two, he's pitched some bullpens as well. So Riggleman's here to kind of bolster that starting rotation, and he'll get to do it for a third time today. Pitcher comparison always brought to you by Ascension here in the USPBL Network. Let's take a peek at the rest of your starting lineups here today. First for the visiting Utica Unicorns, it'll be Drew Glossy leading things off and playing center field here today. Malik Bolin will bat second and play first. Noah Childress hitting 361 has really picked it up as the season has gone on. He'll DH in game one and bat third. Ari Sakopoulos hits fourth and plays left field. Kevin Lambert starting to heat up as well. More on that as the broadcast progresses. He'll play third today. Matt Parkinson back behind the dish. He's hitting hot to start his professional career. Kenny Rodriguez hitting seventh and playing right. Louis Attilas will bat eighth and play short. And John Hodel will run things off and play second base here today. As for the home west side Woolly Mammoths, it's Buddy Dwayne who will lead things off and play third base. Tanner Thomas bats second and patrols center. Ryan Leaf, the newcomer, will bat third and play right. Just a 244 average in his first couple of professional seasons, but really intrigued to see what he does in more of a starting role here in the USPBL. Houston Parker will bat fourth and play second. Connor Bagneski bats fifth and plays left. It's Wade Weinberger, a, slate, uh, a late lineup change. Greg Vaughn Jr. was slated to bat sixth here today, but it's Wade in game one as he ate DHs as well. Duncan Hewitt back behind the plate without Nick Caruso for either of these two games here today. He will catch both games. Christian Perez bats eighth and plays short with Elijah Brown running things out, batting ninth and playing first base. We'll have Brendan's keys to the game and much more when we get back here on the USPBL Network.
these business owners find the time for peace of mind because they rely on Tryon to handle difficult and time-consuming HR tasks like payroll, benefits administration, and more. Working with Tryon, one of the nation's top professional employer organizations, provides access to top-tier health care and employee benefit plans and its team of attorneys and HR experts. With Tryon, you don't have to grow it alone. Visit RelyOnTryon.com. You can always rely on Tryon. What makes Detroit Mercy so unique is the fact that it's in the middle of Detroit and especially with their service learning programs, you really get a chance to be a part of the community. Detroit Mercy, build a boundless future. Slide into a new home. Work with a local mortgage pro who works for you. Get a cheaper, faster, easier home loan. Find a mortgage broker near you today at findamortgagebroker.com. You hear about the promo that Jimmy's John's got going on? Five off 20? How are they pulling it off? Magic? You got David's Copperfields in there? Show yourself, Copperfields! Jimmy John's. Five bucks off orders of 20 or more. Getting ready for the Mammoths and the Unicorns here today at Jimmy John's Field in downtown Utica, Michigan. We'll take a peek at today's sponsors. Ascension. Belfour Property Restoration, Budweiser, DTE Energy, Fifth Third Bank, Jarbcom, Jimmy Johns, Macomb Community College, McLaren Macomb, McQuaid Heating, Cooling, Plumbing, and Refrigeration, Metro Detroit Chevy Dealers, Pepsi, Scott's, and UWM, we thank all those fine partners for what they do for this league. Greg Loken in on the mound here for the West Side Woolly Mammoths, getting ready to face the best lineup in the league here, Brendan. Yeah, the Unicorns are, like we talked about, undoubtedly the best that we've seen as far as hitting goes so far this year. You know, you really got to go deep into the depths of their order to find anybody who hasn't hit the ball well in some way, shape, or form. And they're a really tough team to face, and that's why they're 12-2 and two and way ahead of everybody else in the league right now. Another sunny day, warm day here in Metro Detroit. 84 degrees it will be at game time. 84 degrees, no rain in sight here today. That's what it's supposed to be tomorrow as, we're, as well. A very rare Sunday night game that we have for you. Get the chance to blow off some 4th of July fireworks a day early. I'm not playing on the 4th of July this year, but by the time we're out of here, it'll be virtually the 4th of July. Yeah, pretty time close. Wise. Yeah. <laughs> rare Sunday night game, rare double firework weekend. Should be fun. First pitch to Drew Golossi. 5.28 p.m. whiffs through it. It would be nice to see if Lokanen can get that velocity up today. We should see a good curveball like we've seen. He's been pretty consistent with it all year. One of the tougher curveballs to hit in the league. Slim ERA under two coming into play here today as the fastball is swung in and missed there. Fastball, two seam and the four seam. Change up in the knuckle curve for Lokinen as he delivers that one upstairs on Golossi. Two and two. Drew checks into play today, 313. His walks to strikeouts nearly even. Nicked back there. Been pretty much in Jim Essien's leadoff spot in the lineup the whole season. That started late last year as well. 
two, two. Knuckle curve for strike three. Well, we talked about it. We know that's going to be the payoff pitch, the put away pitch for Loken in today, and there it is in the first batter. Reminder, you can chime in on the chat sections of Facebook and YouTube here today. Virtually no breeze. Blowing again. What's been with that? It seems like that's more the trend here lately is bowling whiffs and misses. I mean, I wasn't here the final day of last week in terms of the public games, but uh, the first two were virtually windless as well. Yeah, it's uncharacteristic of Jimmy John's field to be this subdued wind-wise. Now the 1-1 one, one away. Maybe it's because everybody has uh, departed Metro Detroit already and, and used the highways and have made their way up north. Yeah, I think the highway <laughs> certainly plays a big factor in the wind. Everybody's already gone. 2-1, swing and a miss. 2-2 two and two on Malik Bolin here. Well, it looks like we've got a better fastball today from Lokanen. It's been consistently 88-89. Even pitch here, swing and a miss. Back-to-back -back strikeouts, one looking and one swinging. And it's 89 on that last fastball. And we've seen a few guys this year, you know, get the velocity to tick up as the game goes on. So maybe we'll see Lokanen do that and start to touch 90-91. Well, that's where he would like to be. That's where the, the pitching brass would like him to be because they, they think he's a lot more marketable, certainly, at that level as well. Childress whiffs and misses at that one. Certainly a, a, a marketable pitcher in general. He's been He's got the numbers to support, and he's been really good this year. But you're right, you know, when... You're around 85, 86 with the fastball. It's hard to get some scouts to really quite buy in. If he can be around 90 pretty consistently, everything else the same, might not see Loken in too much more than the USPBL. Yeah. It's that great tempo, which we talk about. That's yep. something that really no matter how he's doing, he's able to maintain at a high level, which is also something, especially in today's age of baseball. I mean, we're hearing it. The pitch clock will probably be in Major League Baseball sooner than later. We've already seen it trickle into the minor leagues. 0-2 oh, away. Like you talked about marketability, baseball in general is trying to improve that as a sport and to bring in more fans. And part of that is, you know, shortening the games. People don't want to be there for four hours. Knuckle curve. Boy, that was a great pitch here in this first inning. He strikes out Galassi and Childress on it as he strikes out the side in the first. Colossi, Bolin, and Childress getting ready to head down to the field to Kira Wolfbauer. She's with our Thrifty Flores sweetheart of the game. Kira? Thanks, Johnny. JJ strapped up his Michigan First Credit Union vest today and went sniffing around the stands where he found our good friend Paula over here today. Thanks to Thrifty Florist, JJ was able to give Paula a beautiful bouquet of flowers today. So if you see Paula around, make sure to congratulate her on being today's sweetheart of the game. All right, back to you, Johnny. It's Kara Wolfbauer tossing it back to your public address announcer here today, Johnny G. Time for your freaky fast facts. The fear of fireworks is known as, go ahead with that one. Covdapyrogasoiphobia. <laughs> one more time. Pretty good. Well, You're not going to make me do that again, are you? <laughs> is that real? Blue is the hardest firework color to produce. Interesting. Number three will come up shortly, relying on the video board here today. The Walt Disney Company is the largest consumer of fireworks in the world. I believe that. The one that is a surprise is, go ahead, give me the biggest tire manufacturing company in the world. The biggest tire manufacturing company. You got this from a, a freaky fast fact? No, but I. it's a regular fa fast fact that I have. <laughs> huh. I don't know, Bridgestone. Lego. Really? Yeah, because of all the toys they make. So many of them have tires and wheels and stuff like wow. that. Lego is the largest manufacturer of tires in the world. Interesting. Well, there you go. 
That's Riggleman on the mound here for the Unicorns. He'll face Buddy Dwayne Tanner, Thomas, and Brian Leaf in inning number one. Still trying to get his feet wet here in pro ball, but an arm that they like. And for a good reason. One of the better pitchers in the history of Glenville State has their all-time wins and strikeouts record. Has produced a little bit already at the professional level, just a 2-2-5 ERA, only eight innings like we talked about. Still haven't seen a bunch of him yet. And not only did he strike guys out at a high level, he kept the locks at a tidy level as well, just under 2.5 per nine this year at Glenville through 82 and two-thirds innings. So something you definitely look for at this level and to get you to this level. Yeah, I mean, anytime you can have a season over 100 strikeouts, which he did, in this most recent year at Glenville is a good thing for a starting pitcher, but to keep the walks below 30, 24 in almost 90 innings over the course of a season, that's fantastic. That's exactly what you want out of a, a starter. Limit the traffic on the base pads for your opponent. It's a pretty simple way, pretty simple game. No base runners, no runs. That's how you win. First pitch to Buddy DeWayne. Finds the zone for strike one. And it's interesting because you're starting to see some professional scouts recommend indie ball to some guys who are on the fringe because obviously the affiliates have been cut down. That means the draft has also been cut down. I mean, you saw the very small, small draft in 2020. It's since expanded back a little bit more, but probably will never get to the large numbers and quantities that we saw before. The 0-2... Breaking ball on the ground to Attilis. Fires one to first, and Bolin completes the adventure for the first out. Let's check the defense behind Regelman, brought to you by Three Dimensional Services Group here today. It's Sakopoulos in left, Golossi in center, Rodriguez out in right. Bolin and Lambert on the corners. Hodo and Attilis up the middle with Matt Parkinson behind the plate. Just to kind of finish that point, though. I mean, Regelman is one of those guys. He was seen by an organization, and... You know, they hooked him into the USPBL, and, you know, maybe that's just to get him another opportunity. Maybe it's because they want to watch him deeper, and they really can't afford, quote-unquote, to take a, a guy that won't be there I mean, just because there's no later round. Um, but they want to see him, and that's why independent ball, I think, is becoming more and more important as the years go on here. Well, especially the USPBL, too. We've already seen a few guys – get recommended not just to go play indie ball, but to come here because of the focus on developing these players. You know, when players come into the USPBL, the first thing we want to do is get them better and get them back out of here onto higher levels of baseball. 3-0 and on Tanner Thomas. 240 average, just over 30 at bats this season. Straightens him up for strike one. It's a four-seam fastball, a sinker, a changeup, and a slider to complement a curveball at the bottom of the arsenal as well. For this native of West Virginia, 3-1 pounded in the hands at 90 as best fastball today, and Thomas will not get back. In there for strike three. Wow. Four of the first five batters of this game have Cade. Thomas doesn't like that one. I kind of understand where he's coming from, but that's a really well-located pitch from Riggleman. Low and away. I think it's still in the zone. I like that call from the umpire. Got Thomas looking. You know, 3-2, full count. you got to be defensive with the zone. Anything close, you can't really afford to watch it go by. Everybody straight up with two outs and nobody on as Brian Leaf makes his USPBL debut at the plate, playing right field. You're in game number one. He's pitched in several, or has played in several independents thus far in his career. Started last year straight out of college. The Pioneer League, then three different organizations 
in the Frontier League. That one knotted on the ground. Attila's sparkling play. If he gets it, he does. Wow. Attila's with a heck of a play to keep everybody off the base pass here in the first inning. Six up and six down for these two pitchers thus far. Every summer, my family loves to have a neighborhood movie night in our backyard. And with my Chevy Blazer, I can head out and get everything we need for a great night. It has plenty of room for picking up friends, and the available hands-free liftgate is perfect for loading on handy supplies. You know, it may be movie night, but my Blazer is the main attraction wherever I go. Lease a 2022 Blazer 2LT for just $239 a month for 24 months. Put it in D and see why Chevy drives the Motor City. They call me Prospects. Since the day I was born is a diver's watch. The challengers of the world have taught me many things. Life is not a numbers game. It's about challenging ourselves. No matter what happens, just follow your heart. These pioneers drive our generation forward, not by setting records, but by never giving up. Keep going forward. Prospects. Available at Lucido Fine Jewelry. Jimmy John's Field is the perfect venue for birthday parties, summer picnics, company outings, and provides the best entertainment in Metro Detroit with great baseball all summer long. Spend your summer nights under the lights at Jimmy John's Field in historic downtown Utica. Well, Loken was so in and out in that first inning, didn't even get a chance to check defense. Brought to you by Three Dimensional Services Group. Let's take a peek now. It's Connor Bagneski in left, Tanner Thomas in center, Brian Leaf in right, Dwayne and Brown on the corners with Parker and Perez completing the double play combination. Duncan Hewitt, the second member of the battery. That group brought to you by Three Dimensional Services Group. Yeah, Nick Caruso, the typical catcher first baseman that would switch on and off with Duncan Hewitt is uh, tied up with a wedding today to attend to. So Elijah Brown gets his second game of the year over at first base. Listed as a utility guy, and we've seen that. He's played in the outfield. He's played at short, second base. Now game two at first. Sakopoulos, Lambert, Parkinson. Three two up here in the second as Sakopoulos battles out of the way of that one. One and one now. Somehow I guess that, that was why Caruso was not in the lineup <laughs> yeah, you here had, today. You had that pegged hours before <laughs> we found out. Just had a feeling, you know, you've heard that story once or twice because it is a more local league, so every once in a while a guy who's local as well in Caruso can escape for a day or two. Here's the 2-1, popped it up. Brown off the bag at first, wearing those shades here today. Stares straight into the sun for out number one. Well, it appears Greg Lokanen really starting to slow down after that first inning. Didn't get a strikeout there for out number one. <laughs> yeah, strikeout looking, strikeout swinging, strikeout looking. In that first inning, two Ks and really nice looping curveballs. Yeah. Now the first pitch to Lambert. Fastball rains in on the hands. And you got to wonder, as a pitcher in this league, I think in general it's considered a pitcher's league. 1-0, fastball high, 2-0. I think we're seeing improving offense certainly this year as well and some of the guys that they've brought in. He just works so fast. You don't have time for anything. 2-0 <laughs> is a swing and a miss. <laughs> you got to wonder when you see no wind uh, on a ballpark that can be very, very windy on a lot of occasions if you think, yeah. yes, that, that's wind number one for me already. Now the 2-1 tipped into the glove for strike two. Yeah, it certainly has to play a factor. I mean, everybody pays attention to it here in the league, whether it's coaches or players, and pitchers are no different. And, you know, they know they might have a good day. Frozen. It's four to the five first batters being K's here in the first two innings. Yeah, you can think, you know, you might have a good day. Maybe even 
be able to pitch to a little contact, get away with a little bit that won't be too dangerous. We saw on a day like yesterday that was stormy and gloomy and kind of windy, pretty consistent gusts. You know, there was still only just one home run yesterday, so on a day like today where it's just dead, you know, you got to be thinking on the mound. Not going to give up too many. Parkinson will sky that one away. Second inning today brought to you by Chevrolet. We thank Chevrolet for their partnership here with the USPBL Network. Now waiting in the 0-1. Curveball in for strike two. It's just such a nice pitch. It starts so far out. It's got to be hard for hitters to time that up and locate that pitch. Locked in and ready. One of the fewer times he's slowed it down. 0-2. Wow. Knotted in on the hands. And Lokanen has it going through two innings here today. A struck out every batter but one. One, two, three again here in the second. Great seats at a great price. Get them safer, simpler, and smarter with Ticket Smarter. A proud partner of the biggest names in live sports and events, including ESPN Events and iHeartRadio. Ticket Smarter has seats for over 125,000 live events and 48 million tickets for sale. All backed with the Ticket Smarter 100% ticket guarantee. Thinking about your next great live event? Think smarter. Think Ticket Smarter. Get your tickets your way guaranteed at TicketSmarter.com. One thing that makes Detroit Mercy unique and different from other universities is that the faculty truly care about you and they're always there to help. Whether it's asking questions after class or going into the office hours, they're always there to lend a hand and really make you feel at home. People are here to work together and whether like you have a question or you're discussing topics within the class, you can go up to your professor and they know your name. They're just willing to help you become a better overall student. Detroit Mercy, build a boundless future. Slide into a new home. Work with a local mortgage pro who works for you. Get a cheaper, faster, easier home loan. Find a mortgage broker near you today at findamortgagebroker.com. Now you see the Twins jerseys here today. The Twins have done a really nice job picking up guys in the USPBL. It seems like nearly half of the guys taken have been to the Minnesota Twins in the AL Central. It's been quite a bit, and I'm sure Twins fans, you know, at least the ones that pay close attention to the farm system too, are really appreciative of the USPBL and showing off their gear here today. Randy Dobnik, of course, the first USPBL player signed and moved on to the major leagues at least. But the Minnesota Twins has not pitched this year yet. Three seasons in the big leagues deep now, spanning 33 appearances. So Lokanen has set up quite the standard for any pitcher. Yeah. <laughs> so far here today, five of six, the first five of six he's faced have been K's. This man struck out one back in the first. He looked very sharp as well. Great play by Attilas at shortstop in that first inning. There's a little looper that'll fall for a base hit. And look out, it was bobbled at first, but Houston Parker will remain there. Yeah, I think Parker thought about going for two with that little bobble. We've seen that a few times. Those ones hit down the line in shallow right and left field. Just, it's a long run for the fielders sometimes. And we've seen some guys take that extra base out of the batter's box on what should be a single. Here's Connor Bagneski now. Three for 16 start here in the USPBL. Back from last year as well as shoots that one foul. All his games with the Beavers last year before moving on at the beginning of this year. He's one of those guys that kind of was playing behind a number of players in the American Association. We heard the same story from Ryan Leaf, who, or Brian Leaf, who batted back in the first. 
More on that a little bit later, but that's what can happen certainly for guys who come undrafted yeah. in the independents, which seems funny, right? Because, you know, undrafted in terms of Major League Baseball, but a lot of the guys in the American Association, the Frontier League, they've already played either at a high level in the minor leagues or in Major League Baseball, so it's a bit different there. They're probably more than likely going to get that, you know, longer look or get the starting spot right away. Now the 1-1 to Connor. Hi, played for Lake County this year, just 19 at bats. But he did well in those 19 at bats. Eight for 19, eight runs scored. Yeah, 500, that's not that bad, <laughs> almost. <laughs> Short lead for Parker at first. Now readying the 2-1 off the end of the bat. Hit 346 last year for the Beavers and nearly 80 at bats. Mostly doubles power, but a nice threat on the base pass as well. Usually walks more than he strikes out. That trend going back to even his college season in 2021. Was dead even this year in the American Association. Seven walks, seven Ks. 2-2 two -two roped foul. Hung a breaking ball there. Dangerous pitch to a good hitter like Bagneski. Waiting on the 2-2, here it comes. Parkinson trying to pull it back in. No bite, though. Three and two on Connor Bagneski. That's something that Adam Riggleman talked to us about a couple weeks ago when he first arrived here in the USPBL. Just kind of learning to pitch a bit better in his last few years in college, paying more attention to the batters themselves. Thought he stayed in the corners a lot better. Look out for Parker kind of leaning at first. This one looping in the air down the left field line. Sakopoulos will see that bounce just in front of the bullpen. It was a long run for him. Yeah, it's not just about, you know, fastball counts and breaking ball counts and, you know, up in the zone and low in the zone. It is you have to pay attention to where hitters are good. And, and some guys are better at hitting the inside pitch. Some guys are better at hitting the off speed. And a lot of guys are really good at sitting on the fastball and, putting that in play and, and you have to pitch to the it's pitcher versus batter it's not you know pitcher versus the count and pitcher versus the strike zone it's it's pitcher versus batter and you have to go against the guy you're facing uh, and really pitch to their weakness see if they send Parker again Riggleman thinking that as he shifts back and you see that with a lot of guys, especially guys with power fastballs. I don't know if Bergelman would necessarily classify there right now, but you know, 88 to 91 on average for him. <laughs> Stand-up lead for Parker. He's running again. This one shifted foul. But guys with power fastballs, I mean, we're talking 93, 94 in college and in certain levels. NAI is one. Division yep. two is one. Division three is one. And maybe even some... Division ones, kind of outside of the top 25 maybe, who are seeing major league caliber players all the time. It looks like they call a balk here as Parker will in fact advance to second without a result of his own here. Now the 3-2 in on the hands. You find them being able to win with fastballs and just overpower them. And, you know, the better they become is when they develop that really good second and or third pitch. But at this level, you know, fastballs, even if they're 92, 93, 94, aren't going to be the only thing that lends you to success. Here's the 3-2 low. Yeah, I think we've seen some of the best pitchers here in the league. Not no, A lot of these pitchers are fastball pitchers, and that's what they're going to lean on. But some of the best ones that we've seen in the league – 
have that ability to go to a second and third pitch. And you could argue that for a guy like Greg Lokanen, his best pitch is that knuckle curve. For Andrew Verbruggi, he's got that really nice curve as well. For Trevor Jackson, I think his best pitch is his changeup. So some of the best guys that we've seen in the league, it's not the fastball that's their best pitch. They've got good velocity on it. They can locate it well. Nice tight spin. But it, when you can use that second and third pitch, like you said, to be a put-away pitch and be one of your best, if not your best pitch, you're going to have some success. Wade Weinberger trying to sneak in a bunt. He's got speed. Look out, Ruggleman has no play, and the bases are loaded to begin this second inning. Haven't seen too many bunts in the U.S. PBL, a showcase league. Most guys are trying to show off their power and their ability to put good solid contact on the ball, but you can also show off your speed. And I think Weinberger wants to do that a little bit more than he has. And, you know, now you get the bases loaded. You put your team in a really prime position to be first on the board, and you're safe at first. And the bunt call will never come from a coach. Right. Maybe, maybe if we're in the last few games of the season and or the playoffs where winning is a bit more emphasized. But, you know, it's said – but look, you're not going to make it to the next level by being a good bunter per se. You know, if you, if you have all those tools and a bunt is part of your game because you have a lot of speed, maybe it helps. But you can count on your fingers how many times you'll see a bunt in Major League Baseball yeah, these days. I think, I think that's the first one we've seen here. Breaking ball outside to Duncan Hewitt. So anyway, it's kind of circling back to the – the arsenal and, and kind of not relying on the fastball. That's something that Riggleman said he really honed in this past year in college, here in 2022, the 1-0 outside again. Less focus on winning with that fastball, but throwing more breaking balls and making that one of your better pitches as well. Yeah, and that curve he has looks good and has – Looked improved since the first time that we've seen. We mentioned only eight innings, not a ton of work. Third straight slider in for strike one. And he says, hey, look, I at this point, I even throw the slider a bit more than the fastball at times. You see it here in this at bat. Three in a row. Chopped on the ground to Attilas, feeds the second on the ground over to first. Bingo for the second out of run does score. Houston Parker comes across. It's one nothing Mammoth, but another heck of a play by Attilas there. Attilas looks very comfortable right now at short. Might have something to do with his bat heating up a little bit on the other side of the ball. Kind of struggled through the first few games. Is now back hitting. Just above 200, a guy who we know can hit really well. That can always lead to success in other areas of the game. Once you get an area sorted out that you've been struggling with, just your overall confidence goes up. First pitch slider to Christian Perez is in for strike one. And kind of watching the replay on that one on our YouTube monitor. Unfortunately, we can't show you replays here on the broadcast, but... It almost looked like the ball ate him up, and he wasn't expecting the hop that he got. But certainly the ability to adjust can be a big thing as well as Perez mm -hmm. looks at the ball outside. And we've seen a lot of unplanned uh, hops on this infield grass and dirt this year. It's just tough to gauge sometimes for a fielder. Do you charge? Do you sit back and wait for the big hop that you know is probably coming? Slider poked into right field. Another run will come across. Connor Bagneski was the second batter in this inning with a walk. We'll make it 2-0 Mammoth. That's Perez's first professional RBI. Always a good thing. I mean, he's a guy who we know has an ability to hit just on, based on what he did at UNO, University of Northwestern Ohio, UNOH. Just waiting for him to kind of get settled in the pros and bring that bat to life. Here's Elijah Brown, the bottom of the order. 
Boy, after the start by Riggleman, you wouldn't think we'd hit the bottom of the order here in the second inning. How both of these pitchers started. Loken in six up, six down, five of them strikeouts. Two looking as Elijah Brown looks at a ball up high. Single by Parker started this, and the walk by Bagneski. Bunt single by Weinberger low to the bases. The 6-4, three-double play score to run, and then the single by Perez. Now the 1-0. High and away. Buddy Dwayne Jr., top of the order waiting on deck. Here's a 2-0 to Brown. Riggleman delays for strike one, 87. Everybody pretty much straight up here. Sakopla slightly in and left. That's the way he's been. Bolin, you see, holding on the runner. Lambert has since backed off up after the runner came home from third. Here's a 2-1. No, it's another pickoff. We've seen Riggleman keep runners close. Parker was kind of jockeying off and started that here in the second inning. It is a more speedy lineup, certainly. So I was going to say, we know this Mammoth's team wants to and likes to run. The addition of Bagneski makes that even more so a factor. The 2-1. Swing and a miss. Fastball tails away from Brown. We've seen it a lot this year. The Mammoths kind of manufacture runs simply by being aggressive on the base paths. Put guys in scoring position without having to put the ball in play. It's a big pitch for Riggleman trying to get out of this inning without any more runs scored. Slider hangs high. Yeah, it looked like Brown wanted that one. It's a pretty good pitch. Take the opposite way, outside hanging slider. Sit on it a little bit. Poke it into the left center gap or down the left field line. Maybe you can score Perez from first. To two slider hanging up there. Golossi, along with Sakopoulos, ranging over to the gap. And it's Golossi who calls him off for the third out in the second. Nice hitting offensively for the Mammoths. They load the bases to begin the second and score two here on the US PBL Network. Companies are competing for talent like never before. With the complexities of handling tasks like payroll, benefits administration, and other HR functions, it's easy to see how a professional employer organization like Tryon Solutions makes all the difference. Tryon empowers businesses of all sizes to attract and retain talent by offering access to top-tier health care and employee benefit plans. With Tryon, you don't have to grow it alone. Visit RelyOnTryon.com. You can always rely on Tryon. joined Green Path and instantly felt a support around us. They developed a plan on paper and this is how we're gonna do it. The plan that they gave me was something that was sustainable. It was something I could do. It was actually lowering my payments monthly by hundreds of dollars. Choosing Green Path is a no brainer. Twenty seven pitches for Craig Loken and which is a bit not indicative of what he's done so far today. That's not a whole lot in today's baseball, but six up and six down, five of them being strikeouts, and that's why the pitch count is maybe a bit elevated. Yeah, and I think, you know, 27, like you said, is, is not a lot, but it, it doesn't feel like 27 either. I mean, obviously six up, six down feels pretty quick. A few high pitch at bats, High counts in the first inning, but Lokanen was able to get out of him. 
He has seen three to two counts thus far, but that's about it. First pitch to Rodriguez. Fastball that skirts in, 1-0. Oh. Rodriguez, Attilas, Hodo, the bottom of the order for the Unicorns here today. There you see Hewitt steal that low strike. Had that knee down. That pitch is below the knees of Rodriguez. That's a ball. Line drive to the gap in right center field. Tanner Thomas cutting it off, and he can't quite make the catch, or did he? He did. Wow, the reaction after that, it looked like it might have bounced, but Tanner Thomas will collect out number one here in the third. Yeah, I thought he got it live. We'll take a look on our replay monitor. You'd like to see Lokanen giving props to his center fielder. He appreciates the hard effort out there, a hard hit ball. By Rodriguez, yeah, that's a smooth catch by Thomas out there in center, who's been a great center fielder in addition to this Mammoths team this year. On the ground, Parker now trying to make a play. Gets up, throws, got him. <laughs> Defensive clinic all the way around here today. Man, what a two hard hit balls in a row for the Unicorns and just some great flashes of leather from the Mammoths. Parker's not a guy we totally expect to be able to get up the line, up the middle, I should say, that quickly. That slide over was beautifully executed and perfectly timed. Here's John Hodo now. 294 start for him. Kind of settle into the bottom of the order this year for un to the Unicorns as he lifts it foul. Drew Galassi, the top of the order, would be next. Greg Loken and so far, eight up, eight down. Yeah, you wouldn't expect a guy like Hodo, who's hitting as well as he is, to be at the bottom of this order. But it's nice to have a good, consistent bat and a veteran presence like John Hodo in the nine hole to set up the top of the order. Line to left, that is going to get down and fair into the corner. Hodo around the first base bag. He will easily camp in at second. He breaks up the... Perfect game through two and two-thirds here for Lokanen. Yeah, and I think that doesn't really come as a surprise. You see the bottom of the order, seven and eight hitters have back-to-back -back very hard hit balls, one out to center and one a, what should have been a sharp single right up the middle had it not been for Houston Parker and his nice play at second base. The writing was kind of on the wall that the, uh, the no-hit bid, the perfect game bid, might have been over for Lokanen, but... Still just the first base runner, the number nine hitter here with two outs in the third. First pitch to Golossi, looked at inside. We already see some stirring in the Unicorns bullpen. This is the first game of the week for both of these two teams. And with the Beavers and Hoppers playing tomorrow, there's a lot of leeway in terms of what you want to do with your pitching. Dwayne over to the dugout, and he sees it stay out of play. And obviously, it's a doubleheader, but it's only a six-inning scheduled doubleheader for each game, so you're not going to expound that much pitching. Yeah, the goal is to, I think, at most use four in an ideal situation through over, the, over the course of the entire day, two pitchers per game, maybe three and one, whatever you got to do. Nobody really wants to use more than four pitchers on a day like today because, like you said, they've got games later in the week. 1-1 one, one curveball in for strike two. Certainly a hard pitch for a left-hander. Sweeping right in on the body and then back towards the middle of the plate. Here's the 1-2. Try to throw it twice in a row. Couldn't bury that one in the strike zone. So John Hodo stands on second base. He breaks up the perfect game through two and two-thirds here. Where Lokanen has struck out five, has yet to record one here in the third. This would be a big one if he can get it. The 2-2. Two -two. Swing and a miss. Right on key. Fastball at 87 high. His sixth K here tonight. Gets him out of the inning without any more runs scored. That's your fifth third. Bank fifth third out of the game here in the third. Now time for J.J. the Water Boy, presented by Michigan First Credit Union here today, 84-degree day. Umpire will appreciate the water he gets here from J.J. and the treat that's uh, 
always handed off as well. JJ will play his Frisbee game as well. Time for your DTE Energy Kid All right, the mascot fans, here it is today. the Here's moment Kara. you've been waiting for. It is the DTE Kid versus the Mascot race. I'm here with Max today, but before we start, he has a special message for a fan today. Happy birthday, Grandpa. Oh, isn't that sweet? But now we mean serious business, right? All right, here we go. So I'm going to give Lancelot a little bit of a head start because he's been pretty slow, okay? All right, Lancelot, three, two, one, go. All right, he takes off. All right, go, Max, go, 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 go. All right, he's going two. He's rounding, he's going three. Here he goes, he's going home. Come on, Max, do it for Grandpa, let's go. And he's safe. <laughs> and Lancelot's so far behind. It's okay, he's still finishing the race. <laughs> All right, back to you, Johnny. It's your DTE Energy Kid Race, the mascot here today. Third inning brought to you by Fifth Third Bank. We thank Fifth Third Bank for their partnership with the USPBL Network. Adam Riggleman throwing his warm-up tosses here in the third inning. He'll face Buddy Dwayne, Tanner Thomas, and Brian Leaf to begin the bottom of the third here. Kind of wiggled out of a jam that could have been worse in the second. And actually, that is not Riggleman. Kind of similar stature, but not similar pitches <laughs> as the knuckleballer Hunter right. Aiken is in now. Yeah, I guess that's a little bit unexpected. We, we, we thought Riggleman would be coming back out, but we've seen the Unicorns do this this year that, you know, they will, the opening day, for example, they threw one pitcher per <laughs> inning, you know. Um, so no surprise that, I guess it is a surprise that Aiken comes out there, but in, in hindsight, not a huge shock on a doubleheader day, 12 innings. We'll probably see every pitcher today for the Unicorns at some point. So just kind of finishing that thought on Riggleman. Allowed the bases loaded with no outs to begin the second. Then the 6-4-3 double play turned by Attilas, Hodo, and Bolin. Drove in one run, then the single by Perez drove in the second. And that's why we sit where we are right now. Harrison Aiken with the first pitch knuckleball ends up outside. 90% knuckleballs is this right-handed arm. A lot of fun to watch. It's been an interesting development, the relationship between him and Parkinson, the catcher. Something that we've talked about a lot, Parkinson using that softball glove, making sure he has enough room to snag the knuckleball. So as you've already seen, there's a little bit of a harder knuckleball, which can range from 76 all the way up to 81 at points in his college career. Can also go a little bit slower at 74. As that one pops in at 75 for strike two. Three and two on Buddy Dwayne. High chopper down the third baseline. Lambert plays it well. It's not an easy play for him. Gets it over to Bolin for the first out. So it's been a little bit of a rough road thus far for Aiken in terms of the runs he's given up. It's kind of come in in the middle to late part of ball games thus far. 11 ERA through five appearances, which obviously as a reliever, not a true picture maybe of what he could do going forward, but six walks to five Ks. The knuckleball obviously a bit tougher to command. So you can live with maybe a little bit skewed normalness in what you want out of the walk to strikeout ratio. And he works very quick, as you see already here. Yeah, I think the big thing is just not giving up too many hard hits, and that's really easy for him to do as a knuckleballer. We've seen that this year. Not too many guys have put hefty barrels on balls. But, yeah, the, the, the walk rate is usually going to go up with a knuckleballer, like you said, and that's through no fault of his own. Nobody has any idea where this pitch is going <laughs> out of the hand. 2-1, shot to the opposite gap there. Sikopoulos will cut it off as they have a man on with one out here in the third inning. Yeah, you're going to get contact. You're going to get some walks, but it's just about limiting the damage and 
you know, reading your fielders. So they have to play on their toes maybe even more than normal with a guy like this on the mound. Yeah, and really, he's only got, like you said, that ERA is inflated partially because of, rel of a reliever and partially because of one bad outing that he had. But eight earned runs, if you, if you take away the innings through just six and one-thirds innings, but eight earned runs through five appearances is really not that bad. If he could start going a little bit deeper, that'd probably be better. But advantage of a knuckleball or two is you have someone that could throw every day. First pitch to Ryan Leaf is in for strike one. Outfield plays him deep, especially Rodriguez in right. He tagged some balls in batting practice. Went off the shed just below the scoreboard in left center field. 0-1. Skips off the glove. I don't think our cameras can necessarily show it because maybe the roof of it, but that shed is not very far away from the fence and the scoreboard, so you have to hit it on a line. And it was yeah. a loud thud <laughs> off of it. So much so that Christian Perez, one of their the fellow guys, you know, hitting together in BP, he said, wow, you hit the ball hard, man. <laughs> <laughs> and we've seen BP be an indication of what can happen in a live game, too. That one knuckles on him. And on Attilis as well. Stopping at third initially, they'll send him home and maybe not the best of decisions in the end as that will rain home for out number two. Yeah, I think there was, I think Taylor Jelikowski can't do anything more than just laugh <laughs> with Tanner Thomas after that one. He knows that was his mistake. The weird thing to me was it looked like Thomas right off the bat was thinking home. And, and usually you do that obviously with a single from second base and a guy with some speed but then Jelikowski changed his mind and then changed it again, so Thomas got <laughs> held, and then he went, and then by then he was dead to rights. Pickoff move to first as Leaf is back. He's aboard with a fielder's choice with two outs here in the third. Houston Parker had a single, a shot to right. that kind of started that rally. Single, walk, bunt single. Parker was the first man to come around to score in the game as he calls time. Harrison Aiken. Out of Mount Olive in North Carolina. Spent five years there. A converted position player. His coach at Mount Olive found out he knew how to throw a knuckleball and said, "Hey, we need you in the, we need you in the pitching staff. We need you in the rotation." A catcher at that point just kind of fooled around and took one of the catchers, his fellow catchers, maybe the backup at that point, and said, "Hey, you know, I'm going to throw some knuckleballs here in the bullpen." His coach saw, and the rest was history for him in terms of how his baseball career would unfold. 0-1, little lollipop over the head of Hodo. It's going to be punched in as Rodriguez has to play it on a skip. So first and second with two outs here in the third. Back-to-back -back singles for Houston Parker, and he was pretty fired up, it looked like, after that first single back in the second that started off that inning in that rally for the Mammoths. You know, he gave a few fist bumps, more than one, you know, kind of to himself down to first base, I think has just not been pleased with his overall hitting numbers through the first few games. Obviously, he was the one that had that grand slam for the Mammoths in last week's doubleheader. Excuse me, that was that was two weeks ago, but, you know, hitting 237, I think he knows he's a better hitter than that and just really wants to at least still, you know, if the power isn't going to be there a ton in every at-bat, at least hit for contact and, and still get on base. 0-1 to Bagnaski, knuckleball, checked his swing and laid off it. And I don't have the opportunity to talk to a lot of knuckleballers. There just aren't many in baseball throughout its time, but you know, one of the bigger things I'd imagine is getting comfortable with that grip because it is very, very different from anything else that you throw as this one popped up to left center field. 
Colossi ranging over, and it's actually Sakopoulos who takes it. Those two have kind of been battling each other for fly balls out in that gap. Nothing becomes of the couple base runners here in the third inning. Brennan Shabbat will take over play-by-play -play when we get back here on the USPBL Network. Every summer, my family loves to have a neighborhood movie night in our backyard. And with my Chevy Blazer, I can head out and get everything we need for a great night. It has plenty of room for picking up friends, and the available hands-free liftgate is perfect for loading unhandy supplies. You know, it may be movie night, but my Blazer is the main attraction wherever I go. Lease a 2022 Blazer 2LT for just $239 a month for 24 months. Put it in D and see why Chevy drives the Motor City. We build. Roads, bridges, wind farms and pipelines, schools to skyscrapers, our members create monuments. We operate. We're the operators and mechanics behind the advanced heavy machines that move Michigan forward. We maintain boilers and HVAC. Our members run the complex heating and cooling systems that we all depend on. Our training is second to none, and safety is our priority. We are operating engineers 324, and we keep Michigan running. What makes Detroit Mercy so unique is the fact that it's in the middle of Detroit. The urban setting is, is really fantastic to be a part of, and especially with their service learning programs, you really get a chance to be a part of the community. My education here isn't just academic. This school wants you to be the best you that you can be. All aspects of the things that I do here have participated in giving back. Detroit Mercy, build a boundless future. Well, like we talked about with the Unicorns, this weekend we did not have a Thursday game in the USPBL. We usually play Thursday through Sunday. So this doubleheader today between the Mammoths and the Unicorns is the only games for both of these teams this weekend, which, you know, you want to get your pitchers in. So despite Greg Lokanen going three innings with just one hit, no walks, and six Ks, his day is done here in the top of the fourth, it'll be Rafi Vasquez taking over in his second appearance back from injury. He was the one who you may remember cut his thumb opening a can of pumpkin a few weeks ago. His was his pitching thumb, obviously, and he was sidelined for about two and a half, three weeks, and he's now back. A converted infielder to pitcher in college. First pitch to Malik Bolin. It'll be Bolin, Childress, Sakopoulos, two, three, four hitters here in the fourth is outside for ball one. Vasquez, only three appearances in the USPBL this year. Mainly fastball slider kind of guy. Good velocity on the fastball for a convert conversion pitcher. 88-89 typically. The 2-0 missed it high. Quickly 3-0 to Bolin, who's having a good year so far. Struck out back in the first to Lokanen, but 11 games played for him. Just below 300 on the B.A., 293 average. Good hitters count 3-0, looking all the way, and looks it in for strike one. Bolin's bat starting to heat up power-wise. Two home runs for him in the last few games. That's the only two he's got this year. And he works a walk here. Five pitches for Vasquez, falls behind 3-0 and walks the leadoff batter in the fourth. Something Vasquez has struggled with a little bit since his return to play in the league. Finding the strike zone. So now it's the DH, Noah Childress. First pitch slider misses. one -oh in on the hands. Tipped in foul. It's got to be tough for Vasquez as well on an injury on your throwing hand, you can't really do much with it. I mean, if it's on your non-throwing hand, you might, might have been able to play with it. But, uh, you know, because it's that finger you throw with, I mean, 
There's just not a lot you can do to get yourself ready. Childress lines this one into right and will be played on a hop there. And back-to-back -back runners for the Unicorns. Single and a walk brings up the dangerous hitter, best hitter in the league so far, Ari Sikopoulos. So it's a frustrating in, uh, injury because it's one that maybe you can't really control that much. Obviously a uh, one you didn't plan on or, or right. think would happen at all. but And when, when you cut it, too, you, you really, like you said, you just have to wait. Just let it heal. There's not much extra you can do. Icing won't really do anything. Obviously, you can't stretch your thumb, you know. First pitch to Sakopoulos is outside for ball one. Sakopoulos, six home runs, 14 RBIs, league lead in both categories this year. This one's hard hit out to right at the warning track as Leaf just before the fence. Ari Sakopoulos thought he had another tagging from second as Bolin over to third. Sakopoulos got a fastball and liked it and did what we've seen him do so many times, but we talked about it earlier, Jeremy, no wind. Yeah, I thought it had a chance just based off his reaction, but my initial gut was just seeing how high it was hit. I thought it might land somewhere in the glove of Leaf, but it carried a bit even with that uh, said, which his balls seem to do no matter what. Here's another guy who has brought the power for the Unicorns as of late. Didn't quite start the year with that, but three home runs in 14 games for the third baseman today, Kevin Lambert. Two fifty average to go along with those three home runs. The 0-1 lined back up the middle on the ground. That's an RBI for Lambert. And the Unicorns finally on the board here in the fourth. It's a 2-1 ball game. It's one of those hits that you feel pretty good after hitting it right up the gut. Right back at the pitcher, hit the second base bag in the end and drives in a nice run here to cut this lead in half. This is a mammoth offense that knows two runs was not going to be enough against the Unicorns team who I think only once this year we've seen them not put a run on the board, and they still ended up winning that game. That was in game two of last weekend's doubleheader against the Eastside Diamond Hoppers. It was a nothing-nothing scoreless tie, and the Unicorns won that game in sudden death. Now here's Matt Parkinson. Been one of the best Hitters in the league, widely regarded as the best catcher, not just for what he does defensively, but at the plate. 343 average before today, 400 slugging, 385 on base. The 1-0 slides in there, 79 miles an hour for strike one. Hitting and catching, usually not a great combo, especially as you get later in your career in professional baseball. But I think with a league like this, it might play a little bit better, not playing every day per se. Parkinson is a guy who is used to and almost enjoys catching every day from catcher U at Carson Newman in college. He's used to being behind the dish, being on your knees every single day, swing and a miss on the 2-1, evens the count. Been heavy breaking ball so far here for Vasquez, commanding it a little bit better as this inning has gone on. The 2-2, two -two, another slider, 79. Fills up the count, three balls, two strikes. It's mostly sinker slider for Vasquez. Does have a four seam that he uses just to get the batters off that sinker and a very occasional changeup. Full count, swing and a miss. A much needed strikeout for Vasquez. That's now two on with two outs as Parkinson goes down on strikes. This has kind of been how this game has flowed. We, we've seen some quick innings with pitchers doing well and getting it out in and out really, obviously with Loken and what he did to the first three, but you have that inning that starts off well. A couple runners on base. Here we've seen three total, already one cashed in, but another pitcher trying to rein it back in. First pitch, a strike to Rodriguez. 
So it's Lambert, the runner at first, Childress, the runner at second. Childress reached on a single, and so did Lambert, and that went back up the middle. 0-2 on Kenny Rodriguez, who's starting to fill into his role and get comfortable now. Took him a while to get his first professional hit, but now three of them in just seven games played. 0-2 fought off foul. Just one of those things as well as these rosters continue to evolve and managers become comfortable and players they think they can develop. Vasquez almost lost his starting spot. I mean, he was kind of slated to be the number two starter coming into the year. He's been here ever since the beginning. But with, you know, guys coming in and out and certainly the pitching that has been bolstered and I think really across the table here in the league as the college showcase came and went. One, two, out to left. Going back is Bagneski. This one's back to the wall. It hits off the top of the wall. A little bit of a misplay by Bagneski. He'll quickly get it in. Two runs coming around to score. Childress and Lambert, and the Unicorns have retaken the lead. Three to two now on a two RBI double from Kenny Rodriguez. And the wind has slightly picked up to left field. You can see it on the pennants. The American flag really isn't showing it, but that was a ball that off the bat, you thought it had no chance to get to the wall or even out of here, which it nearly did. Just kind of a, a throw it at the, the ball type of swing from Kenny Rodriguez. Got some carry on it and drives it a pair. He threw it at the pitch, and I think it happened to just hit the barrel. <laughs> so for Rodriguez, those are his first professional RBIs. We talked about him just getting his first pro hit recently. Now up to four. And two RBIs go along with that one as Lambert and Childress come around to score. Here's Lewis Attilis, whose bat is starting to heat up lately, too. It's a nice looking slider right there. Started in on the knee and slipped right back out in the heart of the plate. Attilis now hitting 206 in 11 games with the Corns. This one's lined on the ground through the infield. Rodriguez rounding third, coming all the way home. And he's going to beat the throw. Good speed on the base pass. Now Attilis on the errant throw will go to second. It's a four-run fourth inning right now for the Unicorns, and they're still going with Drew Galassi due up now. I was kind of watching Jim Essien the whole time down at third base. He knew right away that he wanted to send Rodriguez, who has some speed, kind of a not a sharply hit ball, one that rolled on its side a bit to Ryan Leaf as he charged it. I'm not sure Leaf thought that there was any chance that Rodriguez will be sent home, but that wasn't the case, and a really good job by Attilis to take the base at second. Overall, good base running here in the fourth inning. It looks like that's it for Vasquez. Vasquez will be done. The Unicorns have taken their first lead of the game, now doubling up the Mammoths on the scoreboard. 4-2 to two on Country Music Night. Pitching change when we come back on the USPBL Network. seats at a great price get them safer simpler and smarter with ticket smarter a proud partner to the biggest names in live sports and events including espn events and iheart radio ticket smarter has seats for over 125,000 live events and 48 million tickets for sale all backed with the ticket smarter 100 ticket guarantee thinking about your next great live event think smarter think ticket smarter get your tickets your way guaranteed at ticketsmarter.com Want to hit your home cleanup project out of the park? Well, making sure that your driveway is safe from damage? Rent a rubber wheeled trailer from GFL and keep all of your bases covered. Our trailers come in 20 and 30 yard sizes for all your cleanup needs. Call GFL today to order your driveway safe rubber wheeled trailer. T 
Team GFL, helping you win your cleanup project. So in his second appearance back from injury, Rafi Vasquez day is done in the middle of an inning. He did get two outs, but four hits and four runs, giving the Unicorns the lead is not what Taylor Jelikowski wants, and Bo Atkins will take over on the mound. I'm sure, you know, not what Vasquez wants in terms of the results. I think we saw some positive things in terms of his stuff, though. He, he brought a pretty good slider at times. He hung it, and I think location overall it was maybe something to look to refine in his next appearance. But, you know, as we kind of said before, there's obviously no minor leagues, no, no opportunity to really play in games other than games here at Jimmy John's Field besides your bullpen. So they're going to allow Rafi Vasquez to kind of figure it out and come back from injury and try to build himself back up. And, and maybe he does become a starter at some point later in the year. But uh, second time in as many appearances that he's been taken out in the middle of an inning. We'll see what Atkins can do to try to get out of the fourth. Atkins, a guy we haven't seen in a public game in a while, does have five appearances on the year. Two of them starts a 4-3-2 ERA and eight and a third innings of work. First pitch to the nine-hole hitter, John Hodo, who's already got a single today, is outside for ball one. Hodo actually had a double, check that, back in the third, the first and only hit against Greg Lokanen. One zero is popped foul. Atkins works four seam fastball, slider, fork ball, and also has a curve to go along with it. Four seam has a lot of range on it. It's been anywhere from 87 miles an hour as high as 93 this year. He's a very much a command control guy in college, and that's carrying over early results here in pro ball as well. 1-1, one, one. slides in there, 81 miles an hour for strike two. Attilus, the runner on second after the base hit. That was the last batter face for Rafi Vasquez. The 1-2 curveball got him. Strike three, Ahodo goes down on strikes to end the inning, but the Unicorns put four on the board and take the lead, a big four-run fourth. We head to the home half with the Mammoths down by two. Great seats at a great price. Get them safer, simpler, and smarter with Ticket Smarter. A proud partner to the biggest names in live sports and events, including ESPN Events and iHeartRadio. Ticket Smarter has seats for over 125,000 live events and 48 million tickets for sale. All backed with the Ticket Smarter 100% ticket guarantee. Thinking about your next great live event? Think smarter. Think Ticket Smarter. Get your tickets your way guaranteed at TicketSmarter.com. are competing for talent like never before. With the complexities of handling tasks like payroll, benefits administration, and other HR functions, it's easy to see how a professional employer organization like Tryon Solutions makes all the difference. Tryon empowers businesses of all sizes to attract and retain talent by offering access to top-tier health care and employee benefit plans. With Tryon, you don't have to grow it alone. Visit RelyOnTryon.com. You can always rely on Tryon.
Well, the revolving doors of pitchers has started spinning here in game one of the straight doubleheader between the Unicorns and the Mammoths. The Unicorns lead it 4-2 to two after the top of the fourth was a four-run half inning for them. Jake Fiorito is our sixth total pitcher we'll see today. He takes over for Harrison Aiken, who just goes one inning back in the third. Two hits and nothing else. No runs, walks, or strikeouts. Weinberger Jr., Hewitt, and Perez do up for the Mammoths, now trailing by two runs. First pitch from Fiorito is a curveball outside. Fiorito has slider, curve, changeup, and obviously a four seam. Similar to Atkins, a command control kind of guy. This one's on the ground to Attilis. He'll slide over to his right field and throw it wide of Bolin. And Weinberger, with the speed that he has, will easily get down to second base. Just what the Mammoths needed after giving up four last inning, trying to tie or retake the lead in this game. You talk about that speed. I think that may be in the back of the mind of Attilas, who's had a really good day defensively kind of before that moment, but already having to surround the ball, not the easiest play, throwing against the body, realizing that he had to get it over there quickly, just all too much in the end as Wade starts it off the right way. The Mammoths trying to snatch the lead back once again. They found themselves down two, which has got to be kind of shocking after the start they've had. Here's the catcher, Hewitt. Ground into a double play his first time up. Four-seamer with a little tail on it. Gets in for strike one. Fiorito's got 16 innings of work and six appearances this year. Does have a save to his name. A one misses low and away. Only given up five earned runs, eight total. 12 strikeouts to just four walks. Pretty good numbers for Jake to start this year. Ball on a strike misses. Keon Taylor already warming as well for these unicorns. One roped foul down the first base side. Hewitt has not had the best start to the year, especially in his first six games. He started on this Unicorns team as one of their catchers going back and forth with Parkinson was just one for 11 over there. The 2-2 is wide, full count now. Has turned things up a little bit since he's been with the Mammoths, now hitting 192. Three walks to seven Ks. Fiorito steps off the mound. I think the thing for Hewitt on the Unicorns, he was trading days almost exclusively with Parkinson back and forth. One would rest and one would start. Now with the Mammoths, what they've done with Hewitt and Caruso is one will play first and one will catch. Obviously Caruso not here today, so that's not the case. The payoff pitch got Hewitt looking. Fiorito's first strikeout of the game and of this inning is out number one. Just kind of watching the reaction of Jake. I think he thought he had him on the previous pitch as well. Similar location, same type of action to it as well. Good job to stay with it and punch him out. This is kind of the part of the lineup that you want to get. Perez and Brown have struggled thus far this year, although Perez had a nice rope to the outfield back in the second. Let's see what he can do here with the runner in scoring position. Already has one RBI today. First pitch, a strike. That strikeout on Hewitt is just the second time anybody on this Mammoth's team has struck out today. Both have been looking. Tanner Thomas got caught for the second out of the game. Back in inning number one, Perez puts this one opposite way again, dropping, sliding is Rodriguez, and a nice play throws it in quickly to second. Weinberger's back safely. Boy, looked like Perez was going to have his second hit of the game, and Rodriguez robbed him in right. 
This may be the best defensive show all the way around by both teams that we've seen so far this year. And it all comes, at least from the outfielder's perspective, of great jumps. You don't land a ball like that unless you see it well off the bat. He did that. Cruised his way in a slide, kind of Maglio ordonez esque So instead of what was probably another RBI, we talked about the speed Weinberger has on second. He surely scores if that ball drops. It was going to be Perez's second hit and second RBI. It's just out number two to bring up nine-hole hitter Elijah Brown. The 1-0 to Brown in the dirt, scoots away from Hewitt. Weinberger slides in safely at third base. 90 feet closer with two outs on the pass ball. Rodriguez plays a deep right field as well. We've seen it on nearly every batter here today. Two, three, maximum four steps away from the warning track out there. No exception here to Brown as well, the lefty. Maybe a little bit of the philosophy. It's easier to charge in rather than go back. The 2-0 misses to Brown. Hewitt goes back to third. Weinberger is again in safely. Now 3-0 on Brown. Three for 25 through his first 10 games. Six RBIs, though, despite only three hits. Even with walks and strikeouts, seven apiece. Strike one. Checking in on the Facebook comments, Jason Kirkman says, Hello from Cairo, New York. Go Unicorns. Helen Rivas says, go Beavers. Or, excuse me, that's a mammoth emoji, actually. Go Mammoths. 3-1 to Brown. Fought off foul. Count full now. And Cheryl Atkins says, let's go, Bo Atkins. Had a nice inning for the Mammoths. Taking over for Vasquez. Just getting a strikeout to end that inning. Weinberger on third. Two down for the Unicorns. Trying to escape without giving back a run. They got four in the top half of this inning. The payoff pitch to Brown. Lined out to right in the gap. That will get down and score the run. Nice plate appearance from Brown. He gets his fourth hit of the year. Yeah, not trying to do too much with it. Hopped on that two-seam fastball. They kind of leaked over the inside part of the plate to the left-hander there. And... The inning continues for the Mammoths, cutting right back. So far, been a very good game. We thank you for joining us. Brown, the runner, goes. Instead, Dwayne's just going to line it out to center. And with Brown on the move, he'll get to third. So the inning stays alive. A little bit of a two-out rally here for the Mammoths. They've got runners on the corners with two down. I'm not sure you'd call a hit and run with uh, two outs, but it almost looked like it the way how quickly Brown kind of edged off of first base, got a great jump, and was able to basically walk his way to third base. And the fireworks going off because of that, Norm. <laughs> <laughs> Tomorrow. We hear some in the background probably at a – a residence nearby here in Utica. I drove by my house, or uh, I'll pick it up after this. I'm stumbling over my words here. Sorry. <laughs> Tanner Thomas steps up now. First pitch to him, swing and a miss. Drove by a house by my house earlier. They just had their whole front lawn loaded up with uh, the fireworks getting ready for. So what I'm hearing is no sleep for you tonight. <laughs> Maybe not, or the baby. We'll see. Yeah. one to Thomas, slides in there for strike two. The baby probably doesn't get much sleep anyways. She's a pretty good sleeper really? once she gets to sleep. Okay, that, you just got to get her getting there. her to sleep, though. And I'm sure fireworks are not the <laughs> option of choice to put her to sleep, huh? Probably not. Two down, Fiorito steps off the rubber. 
probably try to peel back the curtain and go watch them. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty colors and stuff. Yep. Two runners on the corners, both with speed, Brown and Dwayne Jr. This one's a pitch out. They thought they might be able to get Dwayne on his way to second base. He stayed at home at first. It's definitely been an aggressive base running inning for these mammoths. Not a whole lot to lose, I guess, with an 0-2 count, but I think they'd like to finish them off right here. There's Keon Taylor standing up in the Unicorns bullpen. Now the one-two swing and a miss, and Fiorito gets out of it with a strikeout. Second man down on strikes in the inning. The Mammoths get one back, though. It's a one-run ball game in the fifth for Jeremy Otto on the USPBL Network when we come back. As your neighbor who works at Ascension, Michigan, and a cardiologist who's practiced for more than 20 years, I'm going to keep asking, how are you feeling today? Your care can't wait. Getting care sooner can mean catching things before they get worse. At Ascension, Michigan, our ERs and our hospitals and other sites of care are maintaining strict precautions for your safety. Studies have shown that people will get care sooner if they're encouraged by their doctors, family, and friends. Get the care you need at GetAscensionMichiganCare.com. Jimmy John's Field is the perfect venue for birthday parties, summer picnics, company outings, and provides the best entertainment in Metro Detroit with great baseball all summer long. Spend your summer nights under the lights at Jimmy John's Field in historic downtown Utica. We're the financial champion of Michiganders. Whether you're a goal getter or a dream chaser, an empty nester or up and comer, anyone in Michigan can bank with us. Michigan Schools and Government Credit Union. Shake it off here at the ballpark a little bit earlier than normal in the sixth inning game as we head to the top of the fifth inning. Jeremy out alongside Brennan Shabbat to bring you the call here today. So glad you could tune in on your Saturday, the first of two. Remember, tomorrow is a very rare, probably the only time this year, we'll have to double check to make sure, but a 7 p.m. Sunday game here at the ballpark. You can enjoy some rare Sunday fireworks as well on the day before the 4th of July, would love to see you at the ballpark, USPBL.com for tickets. Drew Glossy, Malik Bolin, Noah Childress, your three men do up here in the fifth against Atkins. He struck out his only battery faced back in the fourth. That was a long inning for the Mammoths defensively. Eight batters coming to the plate for the Unicorns, including the first two reaching. Atkins delivers one outside. Four seam fastball, slider, curveball, forkball for Atkins. 1-1, one, one, can of corn. Perez pedaling, Thomas coming in. He calls him off at the last second. Well, it looks like Perez was waving off Thomas for a moment there, but the center fielder takes charge for the first out. Decent spin on all the pitches, really, for Bo Atkins. The fastball has topped out at nearly 92 so far this year. 91 today, I believe. Dips in the slider for strike one. Now the 0-1. Mm, another nasty pitch. Bolin somehow able to hold up. But actually, it was called strike two, I guess, according to the scoreboard there. Now that's 
a one and two count on Bolin. Atkins working quickly. Here it comes. Fastball that he overthrew there. Boland today, a walk back in the fourth, came around to score. And a strikeout in the first. The first two innings for Greg Loken in here tonight, very strong. He struck out five of the first six batters. 2-2, two -two slider <laughs> in on the hands, and somehow Boland not able to get hit by it and take a swing at the same time. Battle within a battle. Here's the 3-2. Swing and a miss. Pounds the fastball at 91 for the second out here quickly in the fifth. Exactly what the doctor ordered for this Mammoth team. I know Childress makes his way back to the plate. Single in the fourth. Strikeout in the first. Still kind of dealing with that sore hand. He was hit by a pitch a couple weeks ago. Unfortunately for Noah, it was not ruled a hit by pitch. It was ruled that it hit off the bat, but by review, you could definitely tell it hit him flush. So it didn't break it, didn't fracture it. It's had x-rays. Just a little tender as the slider dipped in for strike one. Now the 1-1. One -one. Another slider off the plate inside. Defense pretty straight up. They play him to go the opposite way and right. There's Leaf just in your picture. A newcomer to the USPBL here today. Now the 2-1. Slider pumped to left center field. Going to hang up there for Thomas. And, boy, you hit it to his left, to his right. Going back on it, Tanner Thomas is going to quickly make his way there for the out. We've already seen him dive and capture a nice out so far in this game. Well, a rare early stretch here today. Your fifth inning stretch brought to you by Genesis Credit Union. Getting ready for Take Me Out to the Ball Game here. Take me out to the ball game. Take me out with the crowd. Buy me some peanuts and Cracker Jack. I don't care if I never get back for its root. Root, root for the home team. If they don't win, it's a shame. For it's one, two, three strikes, you're out at the old ball game. Fifth inning stretch today brought to you by Genesis Credit Union here on the US PBL Network. Back with a pitching change after this. Dunham Sports is a proud partner of the US PBL. Big names, low prices, delivering value since 1937. At Fifth Third Bank, we're working hard to make banking a fifth third better, which means we put 166.7% into everything we do. I think you can only give 110%. Well, with free checking, fraud protection services, and an automatic savings tool to help you quickly reach your goals, 166.7% is possible. Oh. Wait till my eighth graders hear about this. They're gonna be like, it's not possible. Well, guess it is. This is banking, a fifth third better. Slide into a new home. Work with a local mortgage pro who works for you. Get a cheaper, faster, easier home loan. Find a mortgage broker near you today at findamortgagebroker.com. Keon Taylor, already the fourth arm used here today for the Unicorns, takes over for Jake Fiorito in the fifth. So it started Riggleman. He went two, giving up two earned runs in the second. And the knuckleballer, Harrison Aiken, took over in the third. He faced just five batters. Jake Fiorito got the fourth. A little bit of a rocky start after the leadoff error. Allowed things to unfold. Elijah Brown driving in the lone run of the inning. Now Keon Taylor throws a ball inside to Brian Leaf. 
Leaf the right fielder today, straight out of the Frontier League. Went straight to the Pioneer League out of college. Went to Cumberland's, one of the better schools in the NAI in Kentucky. 1-0, chopped foul down the third baseline. And then from the Pioneer League, just after a few games, got traded to the Frontier League. He ended up bouncing around to three organizations there. One of those guys, as we talked about earlier with Connor Bagnatsky, that really couldn't find a starting spot early on in pro ball in those two leagues. Here's the 1-1. Hit him. So a leadoff hit by pitch here in the fifth. Just kind of with the delivery of Keon Taylor, he's a bit more susceptible to that. We saw it around 10 times between his two appearances in two different leagues last year in pro ball. But anyway, for Leaf, kind of behind double-A, triple-A guys, never able to gain a starting nod. So one reason why he's headed to the USPBL and hopes to get some more at-bats. And even a bench player, quote-unquote, is going to get some time here. Runs on first movement there, thrown into second base, not in time. He did that a lot in college, along with hitting for some major power. 29 home runs in 2021 and 20 in 2019. Obviously, in 2020, a very shortened season, had six. Now the 0-1 on Parker. Oh, It's got to be a tough part of the day to pick up Keon Taylor. He's tough at night and maybe tough when these shadows start to eke past home plate. They'll make their way towards the mound as the night unfolds. 7 one Eastern time is around the time we usually start ball games here at night on Jimmy John's Field. Now the 0-2 from the side, pumped foul at 86. Keon Taylor with a fastball, a sinker, a slider, and a changeup. Sinker and changeup, two newer pitches for him this year. Another guy who attended an NAI school in Kentucky, Georgetown. 0-2, hung the slider and fought off that time. Fifth inning today brought to you by Valpac. We thank Valpac for their sponsorship of the USPBL Network. Now the 0-2, swing and a miss. Fastball by him. First K for Keon Taylor here tonight. That's really not been the game thus far of these Unicorns pitchers. Only the four strikeout overall. So Leaf still standing on Second base after the hit by pitch and steal, his first steal here in the USPBL. First pitch fastball in for strike one on Bagneski here. Righty and lefty, the 0-1. Hit him. Ouch. Second batter is it has been plunked here in the fifth inning. That one with the fastball. And here's Wade Weinberger, Jr. He's had a pretty good day at the plate thus far. Has reached twice. Reached on an air to begin the fifth. Also got his way aboard with a bunt in the second. So 2021 in the USPBL 104 ERA, that was through just six appearances, made 24 appearances after he was traded for Tyler Blom to the Frontier League last year. Six ERA in the Frontier. Did hit seven batters. Decent walk to strikeout ratio. Now the 1 0. Flipped it foul. Really has talked about the adjustments 
you have to make as a pro ball player. He said last year was playing the game, but just really not making those adjustments that he needed to. And now is real big on breaking down pitch by pitch adjustments, whether that be on the mound or in between innings, trying to make himself more effective. His numbers have been very effective to this point this year as he fires one outside two and one. This is 11th appearance, has yet to give up an earned run thus far. Three walks to 18 Ks through 15 innings. Those are some really good numbers. Now the 2 1. Slider away. 3 and 1 on Wade now. Duncan Hewitt on deck. He's 0 for 2 so far today. And Parkinson maybe didn't like something he saw there. Runners on first and second, both reaching via the hit batter here in the fifth. Keon Taylor trying to. Hang on to this no-run streak of earned variety here to start the year. Outfielders straight up and spread out. Infielders pretty much the same way. Hodo and Attilis off the middle looking for that double play. This is a big pitch right here. Don't want to walk him. The 3-1, uncomfortable-looking swing on the fastball there from Wade. I think they're definitely having trouble picking this ball up. From this angle, from the shadows perspective, we hear it at night. It, it kind of sticks in the scoreboard from what we hear, the lights. The angle he comes from on the right side. 3-2. <laughs> Wait again, unsure of himself, and he coaxes a walk in the end. So Leaf on third, Bagneski on second, Wade Weinberger on first. That's some really good speed on the base pass. All those guys can fly. And now Duncan Hewitt trying to do some damage. He's yet to record an RBI this year. Did drive in a run off the double play in the second. But you do not get credited with a RBI in a double play. As he whiffs and miss. misses at that slider there down in the dirt. Hewitt, Perez, and Brown, 7-8-9 in the lineup today for the Mammoths. Now the 0-1. In on the hands, but pulled in for strike two. And Duncan Hewitt, being a fellow catcher here today, kind of bails out of the box and says as much as you can <laughs> as a battery mate. The 0-2. Swing and a miss. Good comeback there from Keon Taylor, pounding him with sliders. His second K of the inning for the second out. Here's Christian Perez now. Two hard hit balls for him. Got credited with a single back in the second. A line out in the right and a great jump by Rodriguez, who was playing deep. Sliding feet first, kind of tucked in, which was the second out of that. Busy fourth inning. Base is still juice. This one pumped foul. First pitch slider is Perez. Try to jump on that quickly. Now the 0 1. On the ground to Hodo. We'll look to end the inning without any runs scored, and he does just that. Two hit by pitches and a walk, and nothing becomes with it. With less than two outs here in the fifth inning, we head to the home half when we get back. There are many things you can rely on in this world, like a sunny day brightening your mood, your mom baking the world's best apple pie, and never a dull moment in running your business. And when it comes to time-consuming HR tasks, you can rely on Tryon. Tryon can handle payroll and taxes, employee benefits, and more, so you can stay focused on attracting and retaining the best talent. With Tryon, you don't have to grow it alone. Visit RelyOnTryon.com. You can always rely on Tryon. Great seats at a great price. Get them safer, simpler, and smarter with Ticket Smarter. 
a proud partner of the biggest names in live sports and events, including ESPN Events and iHeartRadio. Ticket Smarter has seats for over 125,000 live events and 48 million tickets for sale. All backed with the Ticket Smarter 100% ticket guarantee. Thinking about your next great live event? Think smarter. Think Ticket Smarter. Get your tickets your way guaranteed at TicketSmarter.com. Throughout your life, from big moments to ones well-earned, we're your financial guardian angel. Alliance Catholic Credit Union. Colin Ledbetter looking to close this game out for the Mammoths. So we head to the top of the sixth inning, or at least I guess keep it where it is. He will face Ari Sakopoulos, Kevin Lambert, and Matt Parkinson. Here in the top of the sixth inning, the Mammoths hanging with the Unicorns after a Productive couple innings offensively. They had a 2 0 lead to begin the game. Yeah, we, we knew that two run lead was probably not going to be enough to hold off this Unicorns offense. It was just a matter of if they could add on to it or not. And Utica took the lead before the Mammoths could put another run on the board, but. You got one of the best guys on the mound right now to keep that lead where it is. First pitch at 91 away to Ari Sakopoulos. Boy, did he hit a deep ball to right field. It was high in the air, so question whether it had a chance to get out. It stayed in the glove of Leaf instead who got back there quickly. Can of corn here, Hewitt, and Brown having maybe trouble communicating and or finding it, and Brown will make the play. Sometimes that's just what happens on those weird no man's land pop-ups, especially in foul territory. It's kind of anybody's game. Sometimes your catcher will make it. Sometimes you don't want him to. It's really hard a lot of times for the catcher to locate that ball as well as some other fielders because he's got to ditch the mask and look up and find it and doesn't quite have the same sense of direction. And I think Brown maybe thought Hewitt had it, and then Hewitt told him, I don't know where it is. <laughs> Swing and a miss at the... 91 mile an hour fastball there from Lambert. Or from Atkins. Or goodness. Strike three from Ledbetter. <laughs> <laughs> the 0 1. Zinged inside. 1 and 1 on Lambert. Ledbetter, sinker, slider, circle change. That circle change, something he's worked on in the offseason. Slider reminds me a lot of the knuckle curve from Greg Lokanen, just a fantastic put-away pitch, a lot of tight spin. He's there it is. It, he's used it a lot this year, and it's been useful. Three saves last year for this Mammoth team through 21 appearances. The walks to strikeouts even. Let's try to iron out that a little bit more this year. Little sinker, Thomas, even he can't get that one. And we saw Thomas make a nice play out in center to keep alive Greg Lokanen's early perfect game bid. That one just a little bit too far out into the gap. A nice piece of hitting by Lambert. Stick that barrel out there, let that ball travel deep in the zone.
First pitch sinker. Lifted back to the screen there by Parkinson. Fastball's topped out at around 93 so far this year. Average on that slider, around 80. It's been a tick over that today. Change up around 81. The 0-1. Off the glove of Hewitt, and Lambert will stay right where he is. You talked about it earlier. Good job by Kevin Lambert. Just to find ways to get on recently. He's been a hot hitter of late. Yeah, it's a second hit today, two for three. And it's just really come alive at the plate. And I think that's kind of compounding off itself. His confidence is going up, too. He looks more comfortable. Now the 1-1. One, one. High and away, fastball at 91. The 2-1, in on the hands, popped him up. Here's another tough play. Brown, ranging, 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 collecting for out number two here in the sixth. Brown, one of the more athletic and faster first basemen. Obviously not a first baseman, but it's where he's playing today. And uh, that's kind of paying off his athleticism and an ability to move off the bag and get to balls. See it there on the only two outs this inning. Here's Kenny Rodriguez now. Had a double back in the fourth that just carried and carried and carried on a ball he just kind of threw the bat at. Not too often you see a ball like that. Fastball at 92 is best of the day in for strike one. Some interesting things in the MLB thus far. Riley Green collecting his first major league home run today. It was a walk-off as well. 4-3 win for the Tigers over the Royals. Man, he has just exuded offensive production since he's been with the Tigers, and it's been a little contagious too. It brings his average over 300 with a 2-for-4 day here today. Now the 1-1 one, one in there for strike two, something you don't see very often either. For just the 11th time in Major League history, the Cardinals go back to back to back to back four home runs in a row. Wow. They're still in progress with the Phillies. They're tied at 6-6. Six to six. Four home runs in a row and still a tie ball game. That's not going to typically be the case, I feel like. That was all in the first inning. <laughs> <laughs> Off of Gibson... Arenado, Gorman, Yepes, and Carlson. Some of their younger talent that they're really excited about going forward. Now the 1-2. Slider, lifted foul. I think it was Yepes. Albert Pujols has gone on record and saying he's going to break all my records <laughs> <laughs> in a Cardinal uniform. Yeah. That's high praise. A little bit of pressure there. Mm, not too much. Certainly are some fun young guys in the league right now, though, that look like will be some record holders at some point. Ledbetter. <laughs> I don't think that was a fake either. I think he literally thought the inning was over. Yeah. Fans have a little bit of fun with it. That shadow nearly engulfing the pitcher's mound. Saw it wreak some havoc, I think, the hitters against Keon Taylor a couple innings ago. Now the 2-2, not at foul. White Sox against San Francisco today in the bottom of the ninth with a 5-2 lead for the White Sox. 2-1 lead for the Yankees in the top of the fifth over the Guardians today. Tampa Bay has a 6-1 lead over Toronto in the top of the fifth. Pretty busy day around Major League Baseball as well. Now the 2-2. Watch the slider zip to the opposite side of the plate. Looks like that uh, Toronto-Tampa Bay series is a doubleheader here today. It'll be a fun series to watch. The Rays won 6-2 in the first game.
3-2, popped it up. Does Brown have another one in him? He says, I got it. And he does for the third out here in the sixth inning. All three outs recorded via pop-out. He gets his sprints in, left, right, center. Cracks a smile to end the top of the sixth inning. We'll see if the Mammoths can come back when we get back on the USPBL Network. There's nothing better than a ball game at Jimmy John's Field and a cold beer from Midland Brewing Company. Hi, I'm Kyle, the head brewer at Midland Brewing Company, here to wish you a stellar time making memories at Jimmy John's Field. And we hope that you're living it up with a Copper Harbor Ale in your cup. You can find more of our selections here at the ballpark and around town at your favorite bottle shops too. We hope you have a ball at the game. And remember, enjoy responsibly. Let's play ball. Check your checking. If your account doesn't get you pumped, amped, or geeked, make the switch to Genius Checking from Genesis Credit Union. It's just genius. Keon Taylor gets a rare second inning of work here in the sixth. He's been Pretty much a one-inning guy so far this year. One of those guys that uh, you just look for to be a change of speeds in terms of how the ball moves, where it comes from. A little bit of an uncharacteristic inning for Keon in the fifth, as we kind of talked about off air. Two hit batters and a walk, but he did work out of it nicely. Strike out to Hewitt. Ground out to Perez as Hodo was able to get that over to first to end the inning. And that's what I was going to talk about, too. Probably why we see him here for a second inning, just because it wasn't quite his typical one inning as far as production. Owen oh, one on Brown as he looked to drop down a bunt. We've already seen one successful attempt at that. That was... Wade Weinberger with two runners on already. Loaded the bases, 0-1, swung on to right. Rodriguez circling back, looking up, it's gone! Elijah Brown with his first professional home run, and just like that, we're back to square one. <laughs> well, from trying for a bunt on the first pitch to taking it over the fence to tie the game at four in the bottom of the sixth, the last inning here in game one of our doubleheader, quite a tale of two stories there for Elijah Brown, but hey, gets his first of the year as a homer, much needed. Fastball that kind of hung over the plate. Brown was all over it. First pitch to Buddy Dwayne, wipeout slider. So the Unicorns really trying to stretch out Taylor into this Six innings, still have no men up in the bullpen. Oh, one slider in for strike two. See what kind of extra innings rules we might employ, but the top of the lineup is up, so we might not even have to worry about that here. As yeah. Fastball in there for strike three, the first out for Keon Taylor. We've seen a little bit of both, some play out where time is not a factor and we'll play two extra innings. The first as the traditional or the more traditional these days, runners starting on second base. And then the final extra inning, which in this case would be the eighth. We're in a nine inning game, the 11th. Now the runners start on first, flip a coin, decide who goes out to pitch or to hit. And then end the game sudden death style in one half inning. First pitch to Tanner Thomas outside. The sudden death overtime has just been so much fun this year. Selfishly, I hope we just get right to that if we do have a seventh inning. 
Well, certainly a doubleheader here today. We're already near the bottom of the hour here, Eastern Time, 7.30 approaching. Where you'd like to kind of hope the second game would start. If yep. Not a little after as Thomas looks at a ball outside, 3-0. He's a good guy to get on with some speed. I think the Mammoths want to end this game right now, though. They have not had the best of luck in the extra innings this year. Suffered three of their losses in the sudden death. 3-0, high and away. So there is goal number one to try to end this game right here in the sixth after the leadoff tying home run off the bat of Elijah Brown. And just three walks for Keon Taylor up until this game in the season in his 15 innings of work, an uncharacteristic two walks already tonight. And like you said, I think they want him to end this game or at least this inning if this is not the last inning. Neither team really wants to get another guy up and throwing. I mean, both have used yeah. already four pitchers in six innings. Taylor not looking at Thomas. I'm yeah. surprised he didn't break. Obviously, that run very important, so don't want to get him thrown out. But he took one arching lunge, then another, and then another, and was nearly halfway to second right. base by the time that pitch was delivered. He would have had a great jump. Now the 0-1 on the ground, up the middle, off the glove of Taylor. He'll circle into left field. Look out, Thomas around second, heading to third. He's there safely. Wow, that's unlucky for Keon Taylor, a guy who we've seen make some nice plays, fielding his position on some sharper hit balls back to the mound. Thought we might see him do it there. Instead, it bounces off the palm of his hand just at the where the glove starts. And Attilus was already moving up the middle, so he was not in position to field it. And then great base running. We've seen the aggressive base running today pay off for the Mammoths. And another example right there for Tanner Thomas. So the only run that matters, standing at third base with Houston Parker at the plate. He's already singled twice, struck out in his last at-bat in the fifth. So he bats back-to-back -back innings here for the second time today. His other at-bats in the second and third. Thomas with a good lead. Runner going to second. This one jackknife fouled on the third baseline. I guess really the only thing that Leaf is trying to do is maybe distract catcher and pitcher and cause a throwaway at this point. Yeah, I think you might want to stay out of the double play as well. Just make sure you can get to second. Obviously, being in scoring position doesn't exactly matter with the guy on third. Outfielders are fairly shallow. Golossi and Sakopoulos for sure in center and left. Rodriguez just normally plays deep. Anything hit over their head, obviously the game is over. Now the 0-1. Popped him up. Tagging up is Thomas. Rodriguez, who has a good arm, barrels onto that one. Thomas trying to stretch it. Heading home. Slides away. Onto the tagging out. Rodriguez to Parkinson. Says not so fast. And the game continues as we're leveled at six here. The outfielders continue to shine here in the USPBL. Now, we've now seen an outfielder at every position, left, center, and right, make a flyout grab and throw the runner tagging from third at home. Weinberger for the Mammoths didn't in left, Porter for the Hoppers in center, and now Rodriguez in right. What a play to save the game. So it looks like we will go to the automatic second uh, extra inning rule, if you will. They are about to commence with the coin toss here. All right, call tails. Here we go. Coin goes up. And I see heads. All right, it's heads. What would you like to do? You're gonna hit? All right, the unicorns are choosing to hit today as we go into sudden death. Here we go, back to you, Johnny. There you go. 
So Adrian Guzman and the Unicorns won the toss and they will send the Mammoths back out there defensively. So if the Mammoths can shut them out, no runs scored, they will win this game. If the Unicorns can score any kind of runs, they will win this game. Well, it's no surprise that Adrian Guzman wants to hit. That's what worked for his team in the first ever sudden death game we had in the U.S. PBL. They won against these Mammoths on a walk-off sacrifice fly from Malik Bolin. But they do have to face somebody they've never faced before as Bischoff takes over for Ledbetter. <laughs> How about your professional debut here for Mr. Bischoff? That's one uh, quite a way to, to, to start it off in a situation you've never been in before in a sudden death game. Well, just graduated not too long ago from Utica Eisenhower down the road. Actually, a site that uh, the USPBL uses for spring training. Yeah. Guy who's familiar with the league, came here in high school and saw some games. Lives not too far from here, Macomb native. So spent most of his college years at the University of Toledo down in the MAC. Was trying to start there on and off as his career went on. But most of his appearances have been in relief. 65 career college appearances, four of them being starts. But his last year was the one to remember. He threw 41 innings, by far the most in his career. Closed games for Michigan State. And the most impressive number of that is the 12 saves that he had. And they're like, oh, closer, that, that's not out of the reach. But Michigan State didn't have a whole lot of wins, just 20-plus this year. So you're talking about 12 saves and 20-plus wins. It's pretty impressive for Mr. Bischoff. Yeah, if we, I mean, if we, you know, just call it like it is, Michigan State not the best baseball program in the country. 24-30 and 30 was their record this last year, so half of their wins were saved by Bischoff. He was a lot of fun to watch. I got to do some games on the Big Ten Plus network that he was a part of, and man, he just comes in and tries to throw it through the catcher's glove. First pitch at 91 low to Lewis Attilis here. RBI single back in the fourth. Ground out in the third. Buddy Dwayne Jr. is in at third base. It's Rodriguez. Not a bad runner to start at first base. He was the last out in the sixth. There he is. Outfielder's pretty deep. Going to keep everything in front of them here. The 2-0 -oh with the runner moving. In on the hands. Throw it on the second base. A little high and away. Otherwise, they might have got him. Kenny Rodriguez swipes the bag. I think they might, did they say that was foul tipped or is that batter interference? There's something going on that's not going to be a stolen base for Rodriguez. I thought the home plate umpire just said it hits you on the bats. Oh. Oh, so the hitter touched Hewitt, the catcher, in that scenario. And now Rodriguez will have to retreat back to first. So they say Attilis on his backswing, after he'd already swung and missed the ball, touched Hewitt on the throw. That, that's not batter interference, so it's still a strike, but Rodriguez has not afforded the stolen base. Something you don't see every day right yeah, there. Yeah, no, that's a new one. Attila's still ahead in the count, two and one. Here it comes. 93 fought off hard, and boy, that's 93 that plays up, and we've talked about it. The shadow's maybe not the easiest to pick up the baseball right now. 93 N on the hands is always going to be scary as a hitter. Now the 2-2 runner moving again. That one chopped foul. Boy, the Unicorns really trying to play this aggressively here. The key is 
getting that guy into scoring position. We've seen it a number of times this year. Teams have loaded the bases with less than two outs in sudden death and still haven't been able to win. You really have to stay out of a double play. That's a, a game killer in the sudden death. Skip the throw, a lot of foul territory here. Rodriguez to second base, he's gonna make the turn. Jim Essien saying, stand up. He's at third with no outs still here in the seventh. And now just one base away from winning this ball game here in sudden death. Yeah, I think if you're Bischoff, he's trying obviously to get Rodriguez lacking over there at first, but maybe the throw doesn't have to be fired in there for an out, but maybe just to work the runner back, maybe just to keep him a little bit honest, and instead it scoots by Brown, who doesn't typically play a lot of first base. So all the infielders are in. Brown at first, Parker at second, Perez at short, and Dwayne Jr. at third. Trying to keep out the winning run in a 2-2 count to Attilas. Here it comes, high and tight. And Kenny Rodriguez will remain parked at third. We've seen some more balls really jackknife back to the catchers recently, so didn't want to take a chance. Bischoff was making his way to home plate as well in that scenario. Yeah, I think there's just a little bit of nerves here. First professional game, like you said, high intensity situation and those nerves go up with the errant throw to first. Hit him. 93 in on the elbow area. Now runners on first and third. And really, it's you know maybe not a horrible situation yeah, here. Yeah, that's what I was just going to say. Now you've got a force out if you need it. Although with the you have fielders. to record one more, probably, right. a strikeout, and then. Right. So a strikeout and look for a double play to try to maybe continue this game here. Or end it, I guess. It, it, it ends no matter what, I should say, as Hodo thwarts it foul. And you, a walk-off double play. <laughs> <laughs> We've seen that. We've seen it twice already this year. Although with the fielders playing in, Attilus is going to be Awarded second base on defensive indifference. Swing and a miss. Attila's trotting to second. So 0-2 on John Hoda. The top of the order is lurking. They've been fairly quiet today as well in Glossy, Bolin, and Childress. Now the 0-2. Slider on the ground. Hit hard. Parker's there. Looks everybody back. Throws it a bit high, but Brown's a decently high target himself. That for the first down. Well, that's a pretty good result if you're the Mammoths. That's why you have your fielders in. They can quickly get to that ball. They've got to react quicker, but that's what you need to do with a man on third in this situation. Taylor Jelikowski will make his way to the mound. And who knows, if that infield wasn't in at that point, that could have scored the run, wasn't very hard hit. Yeah, we saw the speed from Rodriguez already. He might go on that. Four runs off 10 hits and no errors for the Mammoths. Four runs off six hits and an error for the Unicorns. And sudden death here in extra time. And now Taylor Jelikowski is taking the time to clarify something there. I think they're going to intentionally walk Galassi here. They are, and while well, we've seen this before, Jeremy, remind me if this sounds familiar, bases <laughs> loaded, one out, and sudden death, extra innings. We have seen already twice a game end this way for the team in the field with a win. Leandy Castro will pinch hit. Castro will start the second game in the heart of this lineup. He'll take the place of Malik Bolin, who's batting second. Interesting decision. I mean, Castro's a power hitter, but so is Bolin, too, and Bolin has won a game in this position already 
As we mentioned, that sack fly. First pitch chopped foul, 95 there from Bischoff, his highest tonight. You know, Bowling beat these Mammoths in sudden deaths with a sacrifice fly to center. Good hitter at the plate, hitting almost 300. The 0 1. 94 finds the zone for strike two. One out in the inning. Corden on the ground out, just a couple batters ago. Golossi intentionally walked down to first. The 0 2, swing and a chopper on the ground. Perez, eat him up! Rodriguez comes home to score, and the Unicorns win it in sudden death here today. That's just a tough play with the infield in. Perez looked up half a second too early to go home. You've got to look the ball into your glove first, especially in that situation. Then try to fire it, you know, take it one step at a time, fire it home from there. And that's just tough for a new guy who's only played a few games in this league with the man and starting to get used to his shortstop position. But a hard hit ball from Castro, kind of what you want. And Taylor Jelikowski is out and arguing down the third baseline. He is not happy. Maybe with that interference call, not quite sure as he continues to talk with the home plate umpire. That conversation will end. The umpires will break as this game is in between here in the doubleheader here today. We'll have Adrian Cook and Moutine on the mound shortly after the top of the hour here, 8 o'clock Eastern time. I think they'll shoot for about 20 minutes or so, depending on how long it takes to get the field ready. And as they do that, we'll step aside. Another sudden deck victory here in the USPBL. The Unicorns take this one with a run by Rodriguez here today. If I hit a home run, then you know what's going out of the park. Yeah. Bases loaded, we ain't letting up. It's going back to back, you can count it up. United, we stand together. Divided, we fall. Ain't no turning back, we didn't came too far to turn around and have a seat now. We don't compare. Then you know what's going out of the park. Yeah. Bases loaded, we ain't letting up. It's going back to back, you can count it up. United, we stand together. Divided, we fall. Ain't no turning back. We didn't came too far to turn around and have a seat now. We don't compare, cause we unicorns. Thanks, Johnny. I'm here with Kenny Rodriguez today, our Dawn to Dusk player of the game. So, Kenny, you had a great day today. You had a double in the fourth that brought in that third run, just bringing up the lead. You had two RBIs. You had a double and a great catch in right field. So, now you had a great game right now, but what are you doing to prepare for the next game? What's your new mindset coming in? Uh, every game is separate than the other game, so just uh, refresh in the locker room and get ready for the next game. Awesome. So what's the atmosphere been like with the team so far? You guys are having a great season. So let me hear about how it's been in the clubhouse. Yeah, we've been clicking. Um, I just got here. I'm new to the team, but uh, the boys are awesome, and it's a good atmosphere. Awesome. Well, it's great to have you, Kenny. It was great meeting you today. So we're right back up to you, Johnny, and get ready for the next game. Thank you. You hear about the promo that Jimmy John's got going on? 5 off 20? How they pull it off? Magic? You got to take the top of the field today. Jimmy Jimmy Johns. Johns. Five, Five bucks, bucks off orders of 20 or more. Slide into a new home. Work with a local mortgage, mortgage pro who works for you. you. Get, Get a cheaper, faster, easier home loan. Find a mortgage broker near you today at findamortgagebroker.com.
Armor Pick Picnics. Company outings. And provide the best entertainment in Metro Detroit. With great baseball all summer long. Spend your summer nights under the lights at Jim John's Field in a historic downtown unit. There, there are, are many, many things you can rely, rely on in this world, world. Like, like a sunny day brightening your mood, your mom baking, baking the world's best apple pie, and, and never a dull moment, moment in running your business. business. And, and when, when it comes, comes to time-consuming HR tasks, you can rely on Tryon. Tryon try can, can handle payroll and taxes, employee benefits, and more, so you can stay focused on attracting and retaining the best talent. With Tryon, you don't have to grow it alone. Visit RelyOnTryon.com. Every summer, my family loves to have a neighborhood movie night in our backyard. And with my Chevy Blazer, I can head out and get everything we need for a great night. It has plenty of room for picking up friends, and the available hands-free lift gate is perfect for loading on handy supplies. You know, it may be movie night, but my Blazer is the main attraction wherever I go. Lease a 2022 Blazer 2LT for just 239 a month for 24 months. Put it in D and see why Chevy drives the Motor City. Get great seats. Safer, simpler, and smarter with Ticket Smart. Choose great seats from over 125,000 live events. All back with the Ticket Smarter 100% ticket guarantee. Get your tickets smarter at TicketSmarter.com. Your life, from, from big, big moments, moments to ones well earned, earned. We're, we're your financial, financial guardian angel. angel. Alliance, Alliance Catholic, Catholic Credit Union. Jimmy John's Field is the perfect venue for birthday parties, summer picnics, company outings. And provide the best entertainment in Metro Detroit. With great baseball all summer long. Spend your summer nights under the lights at Jim John's Field in a historic downtown unit. What makes Detroit Mercy so unique is the fact that it's in the middle of Detroit. 
the urban, urban setting, setting is, is really fantastic to be a part of, of and especially with, with their service learning, learning programs, you really get a chance, chance to be a part of the community. My education here isn't just academic. This school wants you to be the best you that you can be. All aspects of the things that I do here have participated in the giving back. Detroit, Detroit Mercy. Mercy. Build a boundless future. Dunham Sports is a proud partner of the USBBL. Big names, low prices. Delivery value since 1937. We build. Roads, bridges, wind farms, and pipelines, schools to skyscrapers, our members create monuments. We operate. We're the operators and the mechanics behind the advanced heavy machines that move Michigan forward. We maintain boilers and HVAC. Our members run the complex heating and cooling system that we all depend on. Our training is second to none, and safety is our priority. We are operating engineers 324, and we keep Michigan running. Make, Make your move. move with a quick and easy mortgage from Genesis Credit, Credit Union. Union. We have, have mortgages to fit your life. life. Genesis, Genesis Credit, Credit Union. Visit, Visit us, us today. today. Every summer, my family loves to have a neighborhood movie night in our backyard. And with my Chevy Blazer, I can head out and get everything we need for a great night. It has plenty of room for picking up friends, and the available hands-free lift gate is perfect for loading on handy supplies. You know, it may be movie night, but my Blazer is the main attraction wherever I go. Lease a 2022 Blazer 2LT for just 239 a month for 24 months. Put it in D and see why Chevy drives the Motor City. Why are all these business owners smiling? Because they rely on Tryon to handle difficult and time-consuming HR tasks like payroll, benefits administration, and more. Working with one of the nation's top professional employer organizations provides access to top-tier health care and employee benefit plans and Tryon's team of attorneys and HR experts. With Tryon, you don't have to grow alone. Visit RelyOnTryon.com. As your neighbor who works at Ascension, Michigan, and a cardiologist who's practiced for more than 20 years, I'm going to keep asking, how are you feeling today? Your care can't wait. Getting care sooner can mean catching things before they get worse. At Ascension, Michigan, our ERs and our hospitals and other sites of care are maintaining strict precautions for your safety. Studies have shown that people will get care sooner if they're encouraged by their doctors, family, and friends. Get the care you need at GetAscensionMichiganCare.com. Since the day I was born as a diver's watch, the challengers of the world have taught me many things. Life is not a numbers game. It's about challenging ourselves. No matter what happens, just follow your heart. These pioneers drive our generation forward. Not by setting records, but by never giving up. Keep going forward. Prospects. Available at Lucido Fine Jewelry. First State Bank is a locally owned and operated business. We're part of your community. At FSBcares.com, you'll find ways that we're making a difference by featuring locally owned and operated businesses, providing access to helpful financial resources, and engaging with the community. FSBcares.com is part of our commitment to the neighborhood because strong neighbors mean stronger communities. Where good neighbors do great things. What makes Detroit, Detroit Mercy so unique, unique is the fact that, that it's in the middle of Detroit. Detroit. The urban the setting, setting is, is really fantastic to be a part of, of and especially with, with their service learning, learning programs, you really get a chance, chance to be a part of the community. My education here isn't just academic. This school wants, wants you to be the best you that you can be. All aspects of the things that I do here have participated in the giving back. Detroit Mercy. Build a boundless future. Make your move 
with a quick and easy mortgage from Genesis Credit Union. We have mortgages to fit your life. Genesis Credit Union. Visit us today. Have a neighborhood, neighborhood movie, movie night in our, our backyard. backyard. And, and with, with my, my Chevy, Chevy Blazer, Blazer, I can head out and get everything we need for a great night. night. It, it has plenty of room for picking up friends, and the available, available hands free lift gate is, is perfect for loading on handy supplies. You know, it may be movie, movie night, night, but my, my Blazer, Blazer is the main attraction wherever I go. Lease a 2022 Blazer 2LT for just $239 a month for 24 months. Put it in D and see why Chevy drives the Motor City. We joined Green Half and instantly felt a support around us. They developed a plan on paper, and this is how we're going to do it. But the plan that they gave me was something that was sustainable, was something that I could do. It was actually lowering my payments monthly by hundreds of dollars. Choosing Green Half is a no-brainer. Right. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to our doubleheader Saturday at Jimmy John's Field. My name is Kara today, and I'm here with my co-host, Aaron. Hi, Kara. It's so, it's so great. What a great first game we just saw. Even Dev, I think it was the second of their season so far. Sure. It was a fantastic game today. We went into the sixth inning and had a very big standout game today. We were looking our eye with a big home run in the sixth to take us right in the That was a fantastic game. Off the university. Honestly, I feel like it's just more of a confidence boost every single game. I, you can tell sometimes going a little calm. Elijah went up and collected. They brought it to if, if they were down. That whole third hmm? and almost come back, but it just fell just a little bit short. But they have a chance to make amends here coming up for game two. Yes, yeah, so we're heading into the second game today, and while we're watching some great baseball here today, Jimmy John's Field is also fantastic for a great family fun weekend, especially on July 4th, right, Aaron? Oh, it's Dogs, baseball. You know it, man. Mm-hmm, right? Throw on some apple pie, apple pie watermelon. <laughs> yeah. So, even though we, we won't be playing a game on the floor, Sunday night, Sunday night baseball, that sounds more like an ESPN type of statement, but for here, that's the reality. Sunday night baseball, tomorrow night, fireworks included. For sure, yeah. We kicked off the weekend with some fireworks on Friday night, ending our massive weekend with some fireworks, kicking us right on Diamond Hoppers, Beavers, you guys saw them yesterday mm -hmm. play, and that was a very, that was a very uh, big contest for the Beavers. Trevor Jackson pitched a fantastic game in that one as well. Trevor Jackson's been on a roll for that, for the Beavers as well. Look for, look for uh, really good hitting, look for really good fielding as well for the, uh, for the Beavers and the, and the Diamond Hoppers. It's going to be a great game tonight. Yeah, for sure. And everybody out on the broadcast today, please make sure you stick with us for game number two, and we'll see you really soon. As your neighbor who works at Ascension, Michigan, 
and a cardiologist who's practiced for more than 20 years, I'm going to keep asking, how are you feeling today? Your care can't wait. Getting care sooner can mean catching things before they get worse. At Ascension Michigan, our ERs and our hospitals and other sites of care are maintaining strict precautions for your safety. Studies have shown that people will get care sooner if they're encouraged by their doctors, family, and friends. Get the care you need at GetAscensionMichiganCare.com. We're for people, the pioneers, the underdogs, the players, and the slow and steady. We're for people, for who they are and who they could become. Yes, we're a bank, and some say our business is all about money, but that's an old idea. Because look past the money, and you'll see real human lives. We see it, because we're for people. Huntington, welcome. First State Bank is a locally owned and operated business. We're part of your community. At FSBCares.com, you'll find ways that we're making a difference by featuring locally owned and operated businesses, providing access to helpful financial resources, and engaging with community. FSBCares.com is part of our commitment to the neighborhood because strong neighbors mean stronger communities. Where good neighbors do great things. Member FDIC and Equal Housing Lender. What makes Detroit Mercy so unique is the fact that it's in the middle of Detroit, and especially with their service learning programs, you really get a chance to be a part of the community. Detroit Mercy, build a boundless future. I'm all in with HR and Organizational Development Council. I'm all in with Marketing and Business Development Council. I'm all in with Operations and Member Experience Council. I'm all in with CEO Council. I'm all in with Lending Council. I'm all in with CFO Council. I'm all in with Technology Council. Our, Our credit union is all in with CUNA Councils. They call me Prospects since the day I was born as a diver's watch. The challengers of the world have taught me many things. Life is not a numbers game. It's about challenging ourselves. No matter what happens, just follow your heart. These pioneers drive our generation forward. Not by setting records, but by never giving up. Keep going forward. Prospects. Available at Lucido Fine Jewelry. Check your checking. If your account doesn't get you pumped, amped, or geeked, make the switch to Genius Checking from Genesis Credit Union. It's just genius. Safer, simpler, and smarter with Ticket Smarter, a proud partner of the biggest names in live sports and events, including ESPN events and iHeartRadio. Ticket Smarter has seats for over 125,000 live events and 48 million tickets for sale. All backed with the Ticket Smarter 100% ticket guarantee. Thinking about your next great live event? Think smarter. Think Ticket Smarter. Get your tickets your way, guaranteed at TicketSmarter.com. Want, Want to hit to your hit home, home cleanup, cleanup project, project out of the park? park? While well, making, making sure that your driveway is safe from damage? damage? Rent, Rent a rubber, rubber wheel trailer, trailer from GFL and keep all of your bases covered. Our trailers come in 20 and 30 yard sizes for all your cleanup needs. 
Call GFL today to order your driveway safe rubber wheel trailer. Team GFL, helping you win your cleanup project. There are many things you can rely on in this world, like a sunny day brightening your mood, your mom baking the world's best apple pie, and never a dull moment in running your business. And when it comes to time-consuming HR tasks, you can rely on Tryon. Tryon can handle payroll and taxes, employee benefits, and more, so you can stay focused on attracting and retaining the best talent. With Tryon, you don't have to grow it alone. Visit RelyOnTryon.com. There's, There's nothing, nothing better than a ball game at Jimmy John's Field and a cold beer from Midland Brewing Company. Hi, I'm, I'm Kyle, the head brewer at Midland Brewing Company, Company. Here to wish you a stellar time making memories at Jimmy John's Field. And, and we, we hope that you're living it up with a Copper Harbor Ale in your cup. You can find more of our selections here at the ballpark and around town at your favorite bottle shops too. We hope you have a ball at the game and remember, enjoy responsibly. Let's play ball. They call me Prospects, since the day I was born as a diver's watch. The challengers of the world have taught me many things. Life is not a numbers game. It's about challenging ourselves. No matter what happens, just follow your heart. These pioneers drive our generation forward. Not by setting records, but by never giving up. Keep going forward. Prospects. Available at Lucido Fine Jewelry. Check, Check your checking. checking. If, if your, your account, account doesn't get you pumped, pumped amped, or geeked, geeked make, make the switch to Genius Checking from Genesis, Genesis Credit Union. Union. It's, it's just genius. genius. Getting ready for game two of this doubleheader. Adrian Cook now on the mound here for the West Side Woolly Mammoths. As he faces this lineup for the Utica Unicorns. Let's take a peek at that lineup right now. It's Drew Pavasi who will lead off and play center field here today. Malik Bolin bat second and plays left. Leandy Castro will bat third and play right field. Ari Sakopoulos in the four hole as he plays first base here today. Noah Childress will bat fifth in DH. Kevin Lambert backs on the six hole and plays shortstop. Matt Parkinson bats seventh and catches. Lewis Attilis will bat eighth and plays second. And Adam De La Cruz will round things out and play third base here today in game number two. Couldn't get any tighter. In game one near the late innings, four to four. The official final score that one given what happened in the extra innings? The win goes to the Unica Unicorns. They decided to employ the second extra inning rule in the first extra inning of that game, given that this is a doubleheader as well. So Adrian Cook to face Drew Colossi here. First pitch, fouled it off. One, one quickly here on Drew. In game number one, he was 0 for 3 with a couple Ks and a walk. That was bent in the seventh inning. Lights are on here at the ballpark in anticipation for sunset. 0 1, 92 in for strike two. Should be fun to see Cook here in his fourth start. Some good, some bad through the first three since returning to the USPBL. Swing and a miss there. Took a little bit off on the fastball as it tailed away. One up and one down here in the first. Fastball changeup slider for Adrian Cook. That slider has been one of the better sliders we've seen in the league so far this year. He's really used it to his advantage. That's kind of his put away pitch. First pitch to Bolin, popped it up foul on the first baseline. Yeah. 
Now the 0-1 to Bolin. In for strike two. Let's check the defense behind Adrian Cook here today. Brought to you by Three Dimensional Services Group. It's Bagneski in left, Thomas in center, Leaf out in right. Dwayne Jr. and Brown on the corners with Parker and Perez up the middle. Hewitt catching his second consecutive game here today as this one's popped up as well. Hewitt discards the mass, but Brown, who was very busy on pop-ups just like that late in game number one, will collect out number two. You know, changes in the Mammoths order defensively. The only change in the lineup will be Weinberger sits in game two in place of Greg Vaughn, and both of those guys were DHs. or are DHs today, Weinberger, obviously the DH in game one. So two up and two down. Here's Leandy Castro. Came in in a big spot in game number one. Shatters his bat there as that one flubs into the glove of Dwayne at third base. And that will be a nice one, two, three, snappy first inning here for Adrian Cook. Send it down to the field now as we'll have our thrifty florist, or actually no, we will not have our thrifty florist sweetheart of the game here in game two. We'll toss it to break after this here on the USPBL Network. We build roads, bridges, wind farms, and pipelines, schools to skyscrapers. Our members create monuments. We operate. We're the operators and mechanics behind the advanced heavy machines that move Michigan forward. We maintain boilers and HVAC. Our members run the complex heating and cooling systems that we all depend on. Our training is second to none, and safety is our priority. We are Operating Engineers 324, and we keep Michigan running. Times are tough right now. It feels like the bottom of the ninth, and we're down by two. But we've seen tough times before. And just like baseball has always been more than just a game, Cheap Financial Credit Union is more than money. So it might be the bottom of the ninth, but we're the home team, and we've got runners on base. Batter up, America. It's time to play ball. Here come the Mammoths in the bottom of the first inning. Buddy Dwayne, Tanner Thomas, and Leaf will lead off his efforts for Westside here in the first. As they face that man right there for the Utica Unicorns. Getting another start here today. Montaner has been really good so far for the Unicorns. Eight appearances, 17 and a third innings, just five earned runs. 2-0 and on Dwayne. Very easygoing guy, likes to just have fun on the mound. Fastball pulled back in for strike one. And that's one of the more successful players of baseball can do they can just you know realize we're playing a children's game and go out there and have fun and it's easy on the brain and easy on the mind and can help your play quite a bit likes to work quickly here's the 2-2 pumped in and blocked down there by Parkinson let's check the rest of the defense brought to you by three dimensional services group here today it's Bolden and left Glossy in center, Castro out in right. 
Kayla Cruz and Sakopoulos on the corners with Attilis and Lambert up the middle. Parkinson behind the dish. 3-2, popped it down the first baseline. Sakopoulos has a long way to go, but that one will scoot past the umbrellas and out of play. First inning today brought to you by Budweiser. We thank Budweiser for their partnership here with the USPBL Network. Now waiting in the 3-2. One clubbed foul down the right field line. Three two in there for strike three. So good start for both of these two arms here today. It was a good first inning for Adrian Cook. He struck out Colossi, popped out Bolin, and popped out Castro. He shattered <laughs> the bat of Castro, ended up with basically just the knob. <laughs> yeah, that was a little comical. Always a good feeling as a pitcher, you know. A lot of guys get that wry smile when they break a bat. And off the glove of Thomas. And now, do we just have a shortage of baseballs, maybe? Yeah, I'm not sure. Parkinson's walking over to his bullpen. The umpire went to go get that last ball. Doesn't look like the umpire has one. And now Buley's calling Montanero over there. And He's calling everybody over. Yeah, including the umpire. So, I mean, it doesn't look like an injury to Parkinson. That would be an issue because they do not have a backup catcher. De La Cruz is kind of the emergency catcher, yeah, but Par Parkinson's just he standing seems right fine. there. Yeah, he seemed fine walking over. I don't know. He immediately left toward the dugout. I don't know what it was. Well, he just gave a thumbs up. Oh, or maybe, maybe a thumb. Maybe it's <laughs> not. <laughs> maybe not a thumbs up. Maybe a, a, a show me your thumb here kind of thing. But, yeah, you bring up an interesting point. That's going to be a tough. Well, De La Cruz coming in now. They might yeah. have to sub him out. He's really the only other catcher they might have. So the two on the bench left, John Hodo and Kenny Rodriguez. Obviously, if Parkinson comes out, they would have to sub in one of those guys elsewhere. Hodo can play third base, you'd think. Rodriguez more of a outfielder. Yeah. It appears for now that Parkinson is going to play through it. Like we talked about, his dedication to being a catcher coming from catcher U, part of that is, you know, playing through some injuries and sucking it up and just going out there every day and being the everyday catcher. I won't be surprised if he tries to just play through what looked like to us a thumb injury just based on his interactions with the trainer. It was weird, though. It was on a ball that he didn't catch. We saw that from Whit Hughes a few games ago. He got thumbed where it just kind of bent his thumb back. The ball hit him right in the thumb spot of the glove and bent his thumb back, and he immediately, same thing, he immediately went over to the dugout and had to get subbed out. Parkinson did that as well, but I don't know if it was maybe on the pitch before, and he tried to suffer through another pitch and couldn't. 1-0 swing and a miss on the fastball there. Middle of the infield kind of in their respective holes with Thomas at the plate here. Off the end of the bat, that didn't sound too great in terms of a break or not as Bolin gloves out number two. Yeah, I think that probably was a broken bat. Now Brian Leaf get another opportunity at the plate here. He started game one 
as well. Reached a couple times via error. Also was hit by a pitch in the fifth. First pitch to Brian. Cutting fastball on the interior there from Montaner. Now the 0-1. Mm, swing and a miss. Nasty looking slider. A ball that kind of bounced its way up to the plate. Nice movement. The 0-2. Slider away. Looking forward to catching up with Ted Faulkner, the head coach of University of South Carolina, Beaufort. He coached both Taylor Telekowski and Leandy Castro. Jelikowski, of course, his last year at Madonna. Castro at uh, South Carolina Buford as Leaf sees this one bounce past him. Yeah, for Montaner, I think he's just, I don't know what the struggle is. He's been slider heavy, but a few of them we've seen have bounced well before the plate. That one not only was wide, but bounced on the infield grass before the dirt circle surrounding the mound. Swing and a miss. Leaf Kays, good inning there for the Unicorns. Both pitchers with a 1-2-3 inning, just like we had in the first game of this doubleheader. I'm all in with HR and Organizational Development Council. I'm all in with Marketing and Business Development Council. I'm all in with Operations and Member Experience Council. I'm all in with CEO Council. I'm all in with Lending Council. I'm all in with CFO Council. I'm all in with Technology Council. Our, Our credit union is all in with CUNA Councils. They call me Prospects. Since the day I was born is a diver's watch. The challengers of the world have taught me many things. Life is not a numbers game. It's about challenging ourselves. No matter what happens, just follow your heart. These pioneers drive our generation forward. Not by setting records, but by never giving up. Keep going forward. Prospects. Available at Lucido Fine Jewelry. Every summer, my family loves to have a neighborhood movie night in our backyard. And with my Chevy Blazer, I can head out and get everything we need for a great night. It has plenty of room for picking up friends, and the available hands-free liftgate is perfect for loading unhandy supplies. You know, it may be movie night, but my Blazer is the main attraction wherever I go. Lease a 2022 Blazer 2LT for just $239 a month for 24 months. Put it in D and see why Chevy drives the Motor City. Ari Sikopoulos, Noah Childress, Kevin Lambert. Your three do up here in the second inning after a quick first inning for Cook. Cade Veloss, or Glossy got Bolin to pop out, and then Castro popped out as well. Fly ball to left center or right center field, I should say. Thomas staring straight into the sun for out number one. First pitch fastball to Sakopoulos. We know how much he loves to get those and how well he's done punishing those this year. Always dangerous to throw that guy a heater. Works out for Cook in the end on this one. I think that's a new walk-up song for uh, Noah Childress. A little Dolly Parton there, 9-5. to five. DH here in game number two. That's kind of where he's been for most of the year. Struck out in the first, single in the fourth, and a line out in the fifth. This 
This one in on the hands for ball one. Spread out defense here. The middle of the infield kind of just been playing that way here in game number two. Now the 1-1. One, one. Swing and a miss. Cook pounds the slider. Two pretty good sliders by these starting pitchers so far today. Yeah, both of them use that pitch well. Montaner uses a, li a little bit more than Cook. But both nice pitches to have. One two slider feeds through two and two. Cook has an interesting story. He's bounced around a little bit. Was supposed to play in the USPBL back in 2020. Came to their tryout in August. It was kind of the later showcase because of the delayed season, which started in July in 2020. Now the 2 2. Pounded on the ground, Dwayne Jr. quickly getting over for the second out. He actually tested positive for COVID in 2020, obviously, is a big deal. Yeah. Kind of keeps you right where he was. It ended up being a false negative for him, though. But in the end, it was too late for him to get here. So trained and trained and trained. And then in 2021, was signed. Had a good year. Kind of began as a starter. Or began as a back-end guy. And then transitioned to a starter. Threw over 40 innings here in the USPBL. And then right at the end of the Atlantic League season, caught on for nine innings or so and then was signed by the league in Mexico here's the first pitch to Lambert in on the hands and that popped him up Hewitt along with Dwayne it's Dwayne who emphatically calls everybody off down the third baseline we'll finish that story a little bit later Ted Faulkner as uh, advertised will join us in the bottom of the second when we get back here on the USPBL Network stick with us Jimmy John's Field is the perfect venue for birthday parties, summer picnics, company outings, and provides the best entertainment in Metro Detroit with great baseball all summer long. Spend your summer nights under the lights at Jimmy John's Field in historic downtown Utica. Check your checking. If your account doesn't get you pumped, amped, or geeked, make the switch to Genius Checking from Genesis Credit Union. It's just genius. Slide into a new home. Work with a local mortgage pro who works for you. Get a cheaper, faster, easier home loan. Find a mortgage broker near you today at findamortgagebroker.com. Welcome back to Utica, Michigan, everybody. Four, five, six, two up for the Mammoths in the second. Montanay with a really quick first inning as well. Adrian Cook and Montanay kind of mirroring each other. Cook six up, six down. Montanay has struck out the first two of three batters that he's faced here. Pleased to be joined by Ted Faulkner. He's the head coach of the University of South Carolina, Buforts, and has a couple ties, maybe a, a few more. As we were kind of talking in between innings, you Coached against a number of these guys, coached a lot of these guys as well. So that's a, a cool thing for you, I'm sure, to see him kind of go full circle. Taylor Jelikowski, you had him his last year at Madonna. And, mm -hmm. of course, the Andy Castro, you just had him not very long ago. Yes, sir. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Th this uh, league does a great opportunity for those guys and gives them a chance to continue to play. And Taylor took advantage of it, and hopefully these other guys do too. Chopped through, good stab by Lambert, throws from the side. But uh, Sakopoulos has to range off the bag to get it. It's a nice play, though. You know, you want him to show your pitcher you're going to give him that kind of effort to keep the ball in the infield, so that, that'll work. It's an infield single here for Houston Parker in the second. I want to kind of touch on, you know, Taylor Jelikowski and what his journey 
has been because it's an impressive one, and and he's a guy that you know maybe unheralded. I think it is safe to say out of high school, you know, really had to work his way into the starting lineup in Madonna, and then all of a sudden he was bombing home runs by his senior year and won Conference Player of the Year. How did that happen? I know that was your your first year there, and that was his last year there, but you know. Full circle. You know, sure, how did perfect. you see that? It's a great story because when I was an assistant at Madonna, we were recruiting Jelly, uh, and he came along as a catcher, even though he's only catched one inning in Madonna history. And <laughs> it's funny, he signed with the Minnesota Twins as a catcher. But he, um, he could flat out hit. And the biggest thing that he did was he made the decision to make a change on his daily activities, whether it was working out or eating or whatever else, and that changed his – body type and he'll be the first to tell you that and when he did that I mean the sky was the limit with him he could hit every baseball hard and square there's a hard hit ball glossy gliding just below the flagpole for out number one yeah he, he really worked his tail off to you know on the hitting side of it on the on the definitely defensively side he played outfield played first base he played first base for me his senior year but his bat was Everybody we played all over the country was like that. That's one of the more legit bats we've ever seen. And again, for him to get that opportunity here, which springed him to the Minnesota Twins organization, was what a story for him. I mean, and he'll be the first to tell you how blessed he is. And, and we were loving to have him be a part of the program and to see him grow like that. Pretty cool. Here's Wade Weinberger now, designated hitter. Actually, Greg Ron Jr., who was supposed to be in the spot in the first game, they just kind of switcherooed it with. The righty-lefty matchup here. Forgot to write it in here in game two. 1-0 quickly on Greg with a runner on first to lead off the second. The pitch low and away as Parkinson back there for that one. I mean, you know, recruiting the guy in high school, did you think he, he would get to those heights? You know, it, it, he w we just thought he had a good bat. We would hope he would, you know, take that other side of it, the physical side of it, seriously, and then he really – it's like a light bulb moment in his life, and it changed his junior year, and all of a sudden he was a premier player, not only in our conference, but in the country at our level. Two and one on Vaughn Jr. now. Swing and a miss. And I think maybe the, the right word for him as a coach, relatable. Obviously, he, he's been there, done that. He's just out of the, the Twins farm system, has played in this league. I, I think it's kind of the perfect landing spot for him and the league combined for what he can bring to the table. Very easygoing personality, 2-2, two, two, low and in. But, you know, he, he's also got that, you know, he, he can crack down on you if oh. he wants. But he can also, you know, be not buddy-buddy, but <laughs> yes, you know sir. what I mean. You know what I'm getting at here. Oh, in between games, my kids are running the bases, and I talked to him out on the field, and he's like, he was so fired up about that one call. Yeah. And uh, it was just a unique situation. But he's got that, I mean, his, not only his experience, but he just loves the game and loves seeing these guys get better. And, and that's something that is huge in coaching. And, Building those relationships. I mean, him and I, I know we talk weekly just to, about life and baseball, and it's a pretty cool thing. And, um, you know, his next venture, too, is pretty exciting for him. Yeah, head coach at uh, Macomb Community College just down the road here. That one roped to left, a base hit. Parker to second base. He'll stop there. So something brewing in the second inning after what was a very quick first inning all the way around for both of these two pitchers here. Talking with Ted Faulkner, the head coach at University of South Carolina Beaufort was also the head coach at Medina University for a number of years as well. Just talking about Taylor Jelikowski's days there and kind of beyond. And Andy Castro, another guy that you coached recently. What mm -hmm. made him the player he is and was? Leandy has a, a pretty special talent when it comes to hitting the baseball. He was one of the better hitters like Taylor. I, I put him up in that category, to be honest, in, in the college level. Uh, Leandy can, can drive a baseball, has pop. Um, and understands the game a ton. Well, today feeds high to third, and everybody's safe here. Parker to third, Vaughn Jr. to second, and Hewitt's over at first. A little bit of a jam brewing here in the second inning, and we haven't talked to him about it yet, but Lucky Castro, where, where does that come from? He, he, he said when he was in junior college, they, they called him Lucky because they were screwing up his name. <laughs> really? Yeah, so <laughs> they said Lucky worked better than Leandy, and... Um, he knew when I was mad at him, I called him Leandy, but every other time <laughs> it was luck or lucky, and uh, that was just the way it went. We, we were actually, my kids were sitting down the right field line, they yelled lucky when he ran in, and he gave him the, so it was pretty cool. So, yeah, he's, he, uh, he says his, his dad even calls him lucky every once in a while, so pretty cool. Christian Perez, now at the plate here, the shortstop. 
First pitch chopped into the glove of De La Cruz. Tags the bag over to first. Nice double play. And that will sure end thing. the half inning here. You got another half inning in you? That yes, one was sir. pretty quick. Oh, no, yes, sir. Be back with Ted after this here on the USPBL Network. Companies are competing for talent like never before. With the complexities of handling tasks like payroll, benefits administration, and other HR functions, it's easy to see how a professional employer organization like Tryon Solutions makes all the difference. Tryon empowers businesses of all sizes to attract and retain talent by offering access to top-tier health care and employee benefit plans. With Tryon, you don't have to grow it alone. Visit RelyOnTryon.com. You can always rely on Tryon. One thing that makes Detroit Mercy unique and different from other universities is that the faculty truly care about you and they're always there to help. Whether it's asking questions after class or going into the office hours, they're always there to lend a hand and really make you feel at home. People are here to work together and whether like you have a question or you're discussing topics within the class, you can go up to your professor and they know your name. They're just willing to help you become a better overall student. Detroit Mercy, build a boundless future. We joined Green Path and instantly felt a support around us. They developed a plan on paper and this is how we're gonna do it. The plan that they gave me was something that was sustainable. It was something I could do. It was actually lowering my payments monthly by hundreds of dollars. Choosing Green Path is a no brainer. There's Adrian Cook ready for his third inning of work. It's been a pretty quick two innings thus far for Adrian. Just six batters faced, 14 pitches, and a lot of contact outs as well. He struck out the first batter he faced. It was Drew Golossi. Back in the first is Matt Parkinson, Louis Attilis, and Adam De La Cruz will come to the plate here in the third inning. Continuing our conversation with Ted Faulkner, the head coach of the University of South Carolina Beaufort, in, you know, coaching in the whack. There's a lot of whack guys here. I mean, Noah Childress, uh, a guy that just hits, and mm -hmm. Christian Perez really didn't have a chance to get to it because his out was recorded so quickly. Obviously, you coached, you know, Lucky Castro yourself, along with Taylor Jelikowski, the manager of the Mammoths here. But I think something you're seeing, and you can appreciate this, obviously, coaching in the NAI, the NAI is no joke when it comes to baseball. Absolutely. I, uh, I know people look at it, and it's not the big, shiny blue logo, but honestly, the NAIA is, it gets as legit as, I mean, you're going to get some players there. You know, they have a little different rules and everything else, but honestly, th these kids can play. And on any given day, anything can happen in a game of baseball. But uh, there, there's some kids that can play, and they're showing their talents out here today and, and throughout this season. You see the tape around the thumb of Parkinson. Very easy to see, obviously. He probably can't even wear batting gloves as he <laughs> wanted to right now. But we've heard that his thumb might have popped out from several members down on the field and the intern group in the baseball analytics side of things. And that was the delay, and they popped it back in, and he was right back out there catching. That's a gamer right there. <laughs> that's our kind of guy right there. I like that. I mean, I, that's uh, challenging. I mean, he's, he's a catcher and your thumb. I mean, that's your most important part of your hand <laughs> receiving the baseball. So good for him. One and one on Matt Parkinson here. So I guess what sticks out ab about some of these guys that you've seen, you know, now transitioning to pro ball? You know, I, I like to see wh what they're doing the day in and day out activities. You know, I mean, you know, Leandy has has gotten even in better shape. And I just teased him right in between games. I was like, man, you got to get in that kind of shape while we were playing <laughs> your senior year. But that one ate up Dwayne a little bit. I think that. Uh, thumb guard may have popped him off popped off as well there's something that kind of yeah skirted and yeah it's off his finger <laughs> my goodness go out to catch rip a ball he's doing it all here not at 100 percent in the third inning yeah but you really see him grow you know and you see him kind of make that mature decision all right i'm gonna really take care of myself so i'm ready to go professionally day in and day out and that's a big difference i mean they're, you know they're not living in dorms or apartments and having the college schedule and everything else, they're, they're, they're pros, and they're taking it seriously because you don't know what could happen from here. So that's kind of what I'm seeing and been talking with these guys. 
Lewis Attilas, second baseman up here. Busy first game for him. Really nice plays defensively at shortstop and he's good at the plate as well. RBI single hit by a pitch. As the Unicorns were able to win it in that sudden death hmm. scenario as well. What are your thoughts on all the new things floating around baseball? We've seen pitch clocks. We've seen automatic strike zones in the Atlanti Atlantic League. We've, we've seen just about everything here lately. Yeah, I, I had somebody call me actually from up here. Oops, I want you to call this part. On the ground, Perez will tag the bag over to first. They're just trying to get you out of here quick, aren't <laughs> no, they? No, that's all good. <laughs> I had somebody call me about the rule they have here, and, and they explained it to me, and now I just got to see it uh, tonight live, and I don't mind it. You know what I mean? I mean, I, you know, college games, it, it might be, you know, we're talking about seasons and everything else, and not that this isn't, this is professional baseball, but it's something different, mm -hmm. and it gives you the choice if you want to play offense or defense, and, you know, Jim took the offense in that game, and they found a way to, to scratch that run across. And you know what? You earned it, you know. And Jim Essien is a guy you've gotten to know him yes, pretty well over the, the last few years. I mean, he was at your games at Madonna. is now at your games quite a bit because he lives down in Florida in the offseason. Just a baseball lifer, isn't he? Oh, unbelievable. Uh, the conversations, I, I soak it up every time we talk. And and uh, he'll watch my he'll watch my games, and, and we'll be uh, – We'll be talking, and, and he'll just be like, hey, what about this guy or this guy? And I'm like, you're right. <laughs> you're right. Let's let – you know, you got it. You've been around this longer than I have, man. I'm going to soak it all in. He just finds information from what, what I've I've learned. He, he's got so many connections, and obviously you would, you know, at, at this point being in the game so long. But uh, I think people marvel at how much he really knows about individual players too. Well, that, and that equals the success he has here. I know he's got a pretty good – uh, record here with the unicorns and they've been pretty successful and that's because it matters not that again not that it doesn't matter to the other guys but he he goes all in and he'll ask questions and get he wants to know about your players you know hey can this guy hit he doesn't just ask that he wants to know what kind of character they are are they going to hustle on off the field that kind of stuff and and he, he digs deep and I, I think that matters here's a 2-1 to De La Cruz backs off the plate and that pitch will not count as we have two outs in the third inning. Still a scoreless game, just three hits combined on the board here in game two of this doubleheader. That could have been a pitch clock warning. We really haven't seen it much, if at all, here in the USPBL. It's kept on the field. There's no clock in the stadium <laughs> by both umpires. They both keep it. Here's the 2-1, popped up foul. Yeah, the umpires should have a little buzzer on their belt that uh, they click it as soon as the... He just clicked it there. Oh, you don't have a camera on him, but he, they just clicked <laughs> it there, and it goes, and then he'll feel it vibrate on his uh, hip if it doesn't get off in time. And um, Again, they're trying to pick up the pace of the game. 2-2, two -two popped it up to right center. Thomas has a long way to go. Leaf edging there as well. It's Leaf to make the catch to end the third inning here. Ted, thanks so much for catching up. Great to see you Ted once Cody. again, and uh, keep in touch. That's Ted Faulkner, the head coach of the – University of South Carolina Buford here today. Also Coach Taylor Jelikowski over at Madonna. That was your fifth third out of the game brought to you by Fifth Third Bank here today. We'll have a chance to see J.J. on the field again here maybe. Actually, no, he's taking a break because it's the second game of a doubleheader in the heat. We go to Kara now. The king of karaoke. So we're going to put that to the test today, all right? So we're going to play a classic country song, and he has to finish the lyric. And he's here with Nina and Lila today, and they're going to help him out a little bit, right? All right, here we go, Noah. Play that song. Fell into a burning ring of fire. I went down, down, down. The flames get higher. And burns, burns, burns. The Ring of Fire. Yes, that's correct. <laughs> that's awesome. He really is the king of karaoke. And he kept denying it too. But now he gets to walk with the Jimmy John's t-shirt today. All right. All right, we'll send it right back up to Johnny now. You hear about the promo that Jimmy's John's got going on? Five off 20? How are they pulling it off? Magic? 
You got David's Copperfields in there? Show yourself, Copperfields! Jimmy Johns. Five bucks off orders of 20 or more. At Fifth Third Bank, we're working hard to make banking a fifth third better. With free checking and fraud protection services, 166.7% is possible. 166.7. This is banking. A fifth third better. Great seats at a great price. Get them safer, simpler, and smarter with Ticket Smarter. A proud partner to the biggest names in live sports and events, including ESPN Events and iHeartRadio. Ticket Smarter has seats for over 125,000 live events and 48 million tickets for sale. All backed with the Ticket Smarter 100% ticket guarantee. Thinking about your next great live event? Think smarter. Think Ticket Smarter. Get your tickets your way guaranteed at TicketSmarter.com. Cardinal on the mound now for the Unicorns here in the bottom of the third inning. We saw an early pitching change in game one. This is, I think, more of a case of just trying to get Cardinal some work. And one today really hasn't been a guy who's gone very deep in games either. So with this being their only game of the day, it'll be Hoppers and Beavers again, or the only game of the week, I should say. Hoppers and Beavers again tomorrow. Trying to get as many arms in as they can. Yeah, I think the tone was set in game one by the Unicorns with a or actually by the Mammoths, I should say, with Lokanen only going three innings before they started making some changes. Both teams, like you said, trying to get as many arms as possible. Their only day game of the weekend. First pitch to Brown, bounces. For Cardinal, it's a four seam, a curveball, a slider, and a circle change. In terms of his mix. one popped him up. Lambert, De La Cruz, Bowl and all heading out there. It's Lambert who calls off everybody to make the play. Cardinal is kind of maxed out at 88 this year. Yeah, not a super high velocity guy. He's trying to get to that 90, 92 area. But what he doesn't have in velocity, he makes up for in that head of hair. <laughs> Ground ball up the middle, Lambert ranging there. Off the shoe, tops over to first. What a play. We've seen some sparkling defensive plays here today all around the diamond. Yeah, especially at shortstop. We saw Attilus make a few. Uh, Perez had a nice one. Now Lambert over there. Dwayne got a little unlucky. That's a pretty sharp grounder up the middle, and it took a hefty bounce off the mound that I think slowed a lot of that and kind of redirected it Lambert's way. That was going to be a really tough play had it gone straight off the mound, but it took a little bit of a left turn. Nonetheless, a very nice play at short from Lambert. First pitch fastball high to Tanner Thomas. Third inning today brought to you by Jarbcom. We thank Jarbcom for their sponsorship of the USPBL Network this year. Now the 1 0. Fouled off. Base is clear, the 1-1 one, one with two outs. Slider away, 2-1 and one now on Tanner Thomas. Jeremy Otto alongside Brendan Shabbat to bring you both games of this doubleheader here today. We'll be back with you on the air tomorrow. A rare Sunday night game. Two one slider in. That's a night game because of the 4th of July Eve fireworks that we will see. Now the 3-1. Club to center. Glossy under that. 
cruising just in front of the warning track to make that catch. Really nice inning for Nick Cardinal here in the third. Line out, ground out, fly out. He's doing in every variety here in the third inning. Why are all these business owners smiling? Because they rely on Tryon to handle difficult and time-consuming HR tasks like payroll, benefits administration, and more. Working with one of the nation's top professional employer organizations provides access to top-tier health care and employee benefit plans and Tryon's team of attorneys and HR experts. With Tryon, you don't have to grow it alone. Visit RelyOnTryon.com. You can always rely on Tryon. Every summer, my family loves to have a neighborhood movie night in our backyard. And with my Chevy Blazer, I can head out and get everything we need for a great night. It has plenty of room for picking up friends, and the available hands-free liftgate is perfect for loading on handy supplies. You know, it may be movie night, but my Blazer is the main attraction wherever I go. Lease a 2022 Blazer 2LT for just $239 a month for 24 months. Put it in D and see why Chevy drives the Motor City. wind farms and pipelines, schools to skyscrapers, our members create monuments. We operate. We're the operators and mechanics behind the advanced heavy machines that move Michigan forward. We maintain boilers and HVAC. Our members run the complex heating and cooling systems that we all depend on. Our training is second to none, and safety is our priority. We are operating engineers 324, and we keep Michigan running. Adrian Cook has faced the minimum through three innings here tonight. Drew Galassi with a strikeout as a part of that. We've seen one hit against Adrian, one base runner in general, as Drew swings through it. That was the leadoff single by Parkinson back in the third, kind of a nonchalant quick double play. The very next pitch, Lewis Attilas hit it to Perez, tagged the bag at second over to first. inning quickly had two outs after the leadoff hit. Now the 0-1. They shift Glossy to hit to the gap in left center field. Magneski well off the line. Everybody else fairly straight up. Malik Bolin on deck, then it'll be Landy Castro, the top of the order here. Now the 0-2. Fastball that flew out of his hand that time. 92 miles an hour. He's topped out at 93 today. The 1-2. Nasty looking slider. He would have had trouble catching it, but Colossi will lay off. There is some action in the Mammoth's pen. Just kind of another victim of how this day needs to go in, in terms of getting pitchers in, not anything that Cook has done wrong. 2-2, two -two, swing and a miss. Fastball at 94 by him. His second strikeout today. Yeah, well, he really hasn't done anything wrong. He struck out. The leadoff man and one of the best hitters in the league, Drew Galassi, twice and has right now faced the minimum. And at this point, in what's been a low-scoring game, we're already halfway through. It's all about who's going to break first. The Mammoths threatened last time, but weren't able to bring any runs home. It's Donovan Thacker throwing down in the pen. First pitch to Bowen. Not fair. <laughs> Swing and a miss. <laughs> Even he cracks a smile after that. Yeah. Sometimes that's all you can do when you take a, a big swing like that and it doesn't work out. It's just kind of laugh at it. Slider with curveball-like spin. The 0-1, another one, dances low.
One one hard hit off the backside of Cook there. Rebounds to Dwayne. Got him. One five three in the most uncharacteristic of ways. Boy, I thought Dwayne had no shot at making that play and was just going to do it for effort's sake and make the throw over there. But he got to that ball pretty quickly, and then he's got a very nice arm all the way over there in third and threw a bullet to Brown waiting at first base to get the runner. So looking at this replay as Taylor Jelikowski will come out. It bounced, then hit him square in the lower back as Adrian Cook doesn't look like he's feeling oh too good right now. Thacker has just begun throwing, so we'll see if Adrian will be able to continue here. Looks like he's going to maybe at least try to get out of this inning. I think regardless injury or not, this was probably Cook's last batter. Castro today, here in the second game, 0 for 1, he popped out. He did get a late pinch hit appearance for Bolin in the two hole in that extra inning in the seventh. First pitch to Leandy. Slider right back at him for strike one. Now the nothing and one. Pumped it foul. Oh, and two quickly on Castro now. Cook, I think, is in some pain. Yeah, I think but so. He's just trying to finish out this inning at right. least. Righty and righty, now waiting on the 0-2. Slider pumped it to center. Thomas right in his tracks. That is for the third out here in the fourth inning. Adrian Cook, if his stay is done, fought through four innings here today and maybe a bit of an injury as he winces slightly off the mound. Companies are competing for talent like never before. With the complexities of handling tasks like payroll, benefits administration, and other HR functions, it's easy to see how a professional employer organization like Tryon Solutions makes all the difference. Tryon empowers businesses of all sizes to attract and retain talent by offering access to top-tier healthcare and employee benefit plans. With Tryon, you don't have to grow it alone. Visit RelyOnTryon.com. You can always rely on Tryon. into a new home. Work with a local mortgage pro who works for you. Get a cheaper, faster, easier home loan. Find a mortgage broker near you today at findamortgagebroker.com. Jeremy and Brendan back with you here in the bottom of the fourth inning. Leaf, Parker, Bagneski, heart of the order, due up here for the Mammoths. Looks like Adrian Cook's day is done. He was kind of flexing his hand at uh, various moments, and his bag is heading back down below the stadium here, so maybe looking to get some treatment now. Regardless, he gutted out the inning. Yeah, I didn't quite see. I thought you were right, Jeremy. He hit his lower back. I didn't quite see how maybe his hand was just kind of turned around. Hopefully it's not too big of a deal. It was obviously on his throwing hand. I, I don't think it is because he stayed out for the last batter and got the last out. But if it's any more than mildly serious, that could cause some issues for the Mammoths. 
Certainly been a evolving pitching rotation for Westside most recently. First pitch to Leaf, 93 by him is Brian Camacho takes over on the mound here in the fourth. He relieves Cardinal, hit a really nice third inning. One, two, three, all contact outs. Camacho on the upper echelon of the velocity scale in the USPBL. Guy who we're hoping can see pop a 96 at some point. He's been pretty consistently around 95 and just below this year. Nasty breaking ball in for strike three. Boy, we've seen some really good sliders here today from yeah. a variety of arms. In both games, too. And, and you add into that, Loken in with the knuckle curve as well. So we're getting a few more looks slowed down, and I think it did bang off the side of his pitching hand. It almost looked like it even went like a, as high as his wrist a little bit yeah. maybe. So maybe that pain kind of going down yeah. as well, but don't want to speculate too much, but it is clear by looking at it again, it did not hit off the back, at least at first. Kind of on that ulna, the outside bone, rotating bone for the the forearm. Houston Parker here in the second game, singled in the second. Magneski, who's next, popped out. Macho kind of hesitated there as that slider bounces. Parker's been really good today. Three hits and five plate appearances so far, this being number six. One of the things we talked about, he's just wanted to get on base a little bit more, get some singles, some liners into the outfield, and he's done that. 1-1, one, one, pump the fastball at 93. Parker swings and misses. You talk about guys gutting it out. The man on the right side of your screen right there, Parkinson, doing just that. His thumb popped out. Yeah, I mean, it's no surprise that he's going to stick it out and stay with it. We've talked about a few times already his college days as a catcher and what he's learned. One, two, swing and a miss. Back-to-back -back strikeouts here for Camacho. Relievers have been good here in the second game for the Unicorns. Kind of reminds me of college basketball play last year. Also called Detroit Mercy on the television side. Antoine Davis, one of the better shooters in the country, had his shoulder pop out in the middle of the game, came back and made a three. <laughs> really? <laughs> That's pretty funny. You know, Parkinson is just, he's dealt with injuries in the past and has worked through them. And, you know, unless it's very, very serious, he's going to go out there and, and catch and do the best he can. And, you know, he I think he knows this Unicorns team needs him to also. One of the things we talked about, they don't really have a true backup catcher. 94 low and away from Camacho here. Bottom of the fourth inning brought to you by Pepsi. We thank Pepsi for their partnership here at the USPBL Network. It seems like some of these guys' velos have been upticking here today as well. Not mm -hmm. to say that Camacho hasn't touched here. He's certainly hung up in the 94-95 area a little bit more as the season has gone on. The 1-1. Slap foul. <laughs> Taylor Chelikowski spinning around. He ducked below that one. 1-2 one on Bagneski now. Yeah, even, you know, you talked about guys that have had the uptick. Loken in today was pretty consistently 88-89 not much outside of those two. That's higher for him. Knotted on the ground to De La Cruz. He took charge, flies it over to first base. Another one, two, three inning. 
Three out of the four pitching wise for the Unicorns have been just that. We're still scoreless on the USPBL network. Brennan Shabath will take over when we get back. <laughs> As your neighbor who works at Ascension, Michigan, and a cardiologist who's practiced for more than 20 years, I'm going to keep asking, how are you feeling today? Your care can't wait. Getting care sooner can mean catching things before they get worse. At Ascension, Michigan, our ERs and our hospitals and other sites of care are maintaining strict precautions for your safety. Studies have shown that people will get care sooner if they're encouraged by their doctors, family, and friends. Get the care you need at GetAscensionMichiganCare.com. One thing that makes Detroit Mercy unique and different from other universities is that the faculty truly care about you and they're always there to help. Whether it's asking questions after class or going into the office hours, they're always there to lend a hand and really make you feel at home. People are here to work together and whether like you have a question or you're discussing topics within the class, you can go up to your professor and they know your name. They're just willing to help you become a better overall student. Detroit Mercy, build a boundless future. Jimmy John's Field is the perfect venue for birthday parties, summer picnics, company outings, and provides the best entertainment in Metro Detroit with great baseball all summer long. Spend your summer nights under the lights at Jimmy John's Field in historic downtown Utica. Donovan Thacker takes over on the mound for Adrian Cook, who had a very good day. Kind of took a ball off the wrist. The outside of the hand might be an injury. It was probably his last batter to face anyways. He took a ball back to the mound that hit off his hand. They were able to get the second out on a nice play from Lambert. And Cook stayed out to finish the inning. He ends with four innings pitch, just one hit, no runs, no walks, and two strikeouts. Thacker is a guy who has dealt with injuries before in the game. A few weeks ago, he went out and threw only four pitches at the start of a game for the Mammoths, got one out, and then after that fourth pitch, had a bit of an oblique injury. Nick Caruso, who was the catcher, uh, the starting catcher for the Mammoths back then. He's not here today, gone for a wedding. But Caruso noticed something wrong, and Thacker had an oblique injury and was gone for a couple weeks, but he's back now. Four appearances on the year, two of them starts. Only five and two-thirds innings of work. Only giving up three runs all earned, four walks to three strikeouts. So not a huge sample size right now for Donovan Thacker. We'll see how many innings he pitches today. He's behind 2-0 to Ari Sakopoulos. Sakopoulos was 0 for 3 in game 1, 0 for 1 today, a fly out to center back in the second inning. 2-0, fastball at 89 in there for strike 1. This is probably Thacker's only inning. There's still arms going on. Tyler Richley warming up in the Mammoths bullpen. The 2-1 clubbed out to right, deep way back for Forget about it. Ari Sakopoulos with his seventh of the year finally gets a run on the board in this game, and the Unicorns lead it 1 0. Boy, he hit some moonshots, and we saw one earlier in the first game that was way up there. That young fan may just uh, have a ball that belongs to an affiliate player at some point if he keeps doing what he's doing. But uh, anyway, we saw the ball in the first game. It's like, eh, it's really high. You know, it's still far. Does it have a chance to get out? Maybe not quite. It didn't. It was caught by Leaf in right. Leaf is in right again, but he literally admired it. He His head was in awe looking up as it looped over his head and nearly over the Clinton River as well. That ball hit on the back of the berm out there. We don't see that happen too often. Arias Sakopoulos does a lot of things that we don't see happen too often. <laughs> now seven home runs, 15 RBIs 
on the year. With just his home runs, he would have some of the most RBIs in the league. Childress hits this one out to the gap in left. Going back, still at the track and caught. Nice play there by Connor Bagneski in left field. That one had a lot of distance behind it, too. Two hard hit balls for the Unicorns. Only one has resulted in a run here in the fifth. It kind of looked like it knuckled on Bagneski as well, or he didn't have the best read on it either one because he was circling around a little bit, still trying to edge over and find that right position, but a good job to get to his spot in the end. Uh, Squeeze a big out number one here in the fifth with already the first run given up. Lost his hat on the way, but didn't lose the ball. Was able to snag it for out number one. And now Kevin Lambert, who has showcased a little bit of power recently. It seems like anywhere you go in this Unicorns lineup, there's somebody who has shown power at some point. First pitch to Lambert. Breaking ball at 79 in for a strike. Thacker's fastball slider changeup curve. A one fastball pounded foul. Lambert two for three in game one. Two singles, one of them for an RBI. Did score a run as well. Oh for one today. That one's way outside outside of the left-handed batter's box for ball one. The one, two, same thing. Hewitt blocks it again, evens the count at two apiece. Kevin Lambert was here in the USPBL last year, only for 11 games, hit 286. Four RBIs. Has had a much improved year this year in more games as well. Swing and a miss there. Lambert goes down on strikes for out number two. And now the hockey player in the Unicorns lineup part playing through some injuries, Matt Parkinson. He's back out there with what looks like a more taped <laughs> thumb this time. His first time up with the taped thumb at came off as he rocketed a single down the left field line. They brought out the bigger reinforcements. The other one popped up. Yeah, I think this one, the first one was taped just around his thumb. This one goes down to the base of the hand as he looks at ball one. 0 for 3 with a couple Ks in game number one for Parkinson. Obviously the single back in the third, his only appearance here in game two. 1-0, missed it high. Some deficit, definite run on that pitch. You can even see how Hewitt responded to it. Started on the outside corner, went back towards the middle, but just a bit high. Two balls, no strikes. And there's one. Parkinson, 343 average in 12 games played before today. That doesn't include the... Game one stats as he hits this one on the ground. A high bounce to Dwayne. Field and flip to first. Out number three. So after the Sakopoulos solo shot, it's three up and three down for Thacker. But the Unicorns get on the board with one as we head to the home half of the fifth on the USPBL Network. Dunham Sports is a proud partner of the USPBL. Big names, low prices, delivering value since 1937.
we're working hard to make banking a fifth third better, which means we put 166.7% into everything we do. I think you can only give 110%. Well, with free checking, fraud protection services, and an automatic savings tool to help you quickly reach your goals, 166.7% is possible. Oh, wait till my eighth graders hear about this. They're gonna be like, it's not possible. Well, guess it is. This is banking, a fifth third better. Slide into a new home. Work with a local mortgage pro who works for you. Get a cheaper, faster, easier home loan. Find a mortgage broker near you today at findamortgagebroker.com. Got another pitching change for the Unicorns here as Christian Dearman and Kyle Bischoff give a wave to our camera down there on the third base dugout. Perry Bewley takes over for Brian Camacho who went an inning in the fourth, two strikeouts. No hits given up, no walks either. Two really good innings by Cardinal and Camacho, obviously both bring a little bit different arsenals. Camacho more the power arm, and he's showing that he can hit 94, 95 consistently these days. Among the last three pitchers for the Unicorns, stretching all the way back to the starter, Montaner, it's been seven straight recorded outs. Cardinal had a three up, three down inning, and so did Camacho, and Bewley faces Greg Vaughn Jr. and gives him a strike one. One bounces before the plate for ball one. Bewley, the native of Chardon, Ohio, works four seam fastball, slider, and a change up. Change up is more of a work in progress. Mainly fastball slider for Bewley, who's looked really good this year. Six appearances, nine and two thirds innings, only one earned run given up. Another slider bounces two and one. Three walks to 18 Ks for Mr. Bewley. Two one to Vaughn. Misses for a ball. Parkinson liked the pitch. It was a fast ball underneath the zone. Didn't get the call. On waiting on a 3-1. Slider misses. A five-pitch walk to Greg Vaughn Jr. Well, walks, let alone base runners here in this game for Unicorns pitching has been in a premium. That's their first walk and just three other base runners to speak of. They're all singles. Back in the second, trying to keep this game right where it is. How about the tight game again here? Yeah. Both games of these doubleheaders. Vaughn was one of those just three singles in that second inning, trying to start a rally. He's now the tying run over on first. Hewitt at the plate, singled in the second as well. Pickoff move works Vaughn back. Hewitt went 0 for 3 with a couple strikeouts in game one. Spent his college days at Butler in Indianapolis, did Duncan Hewitt. Five seasons there. Was only able to play two games in the US PBL in 2021. He puts this one out to right field, and that's going to drop for a base hit. Vaughn stops at second. And now the first two on, down by a run here in the bottom of the fifth for the West Side Woolly Mammoths. Kind of how these rallies in both of these games have started. Chipping away. A walk, a single, a hit by pitch here. We've seen the bases loaded multiple times, but really these offenses haven't been able to you know, get themselves over the hump in terms of separating these games. At least except for the Ari Sakopoulos home run in this inning in the top half. It's been pretty much station to station today for both teams as far as run scoring has gone. Not a lot of extra base hits. Now here's Christian Perez, the shortstop for the Mammoths. 
Makes it a called strike one. Perez grounded into a double play in that second inning to end the inning without putting any runs on the board for the Mammoths. An unusual double play grounded it to third, and De La Cruz stepped on the third base bag with the bases loaded and fired over to first for the third out. And we've seen two double plays like that here today. One to short, one to third. Perez was one of the other ones who had the defensive double play. He fielded a ball up the middle and stepped on second and through to first. A ball and a strike to him now. Buley checks the runner, now throws. Mm. Slider didn't, or he got that pitch the first time, didn't get it that time. Two and one. It looked like decent location, maybe just off the outside corner. Here's another slider. We've talked about the sliders here today and how effective they've been for a variety of arms. Adrian Cook had a good one before exiting the injury after the fourth. 2-1, fought off foul to the screen. Perez, three for 18 on the year, including the two games today. Played in 51 games at Northwestern Ohio in this most recent 2022 season. Hit just below 400 with a 949 OPS. Nearly 50 RBIs for him in this past year. Some fans sticking around for game two. It's a close one right now as Buley steps off between the Unicorns and the Mammoths. one nothing, thanks to an Ari Sakopoulos solo shot at the top half of this inning. Buley and Matt Parkinson discussing some things. Hewitt at first, Vaughn at second. Walk and single to start the inning here in the home half of the fifth. This one's grounded to short. Flip to second for one. Throw to first is not going to be in time, so the Unicorns only get one at second. Runners on the corners with one down. Certainly would have traded that double play with the lead runner trailing to third, but now you have first and third, a little bit of a different look here as these Bamas try to continue to rally. All it really takes is one swing, though, here with only one out, punching into the outfield, and we've already seen this guy do that once and then hit his first professional home run on a line as well later in the ballgame. And Brown's had a really good day today, two for three, two RBIs. His home run in game one was a solo shot. He had another RBI on a single in that game. 0 for 1, a pop out to short the third inning. I don't know about you, but it, it kind of felt like that inning would end right there. You have the leadoff home run, kind of all the momentum riding you after. You had led the game, then the Unicorns took it back for it. It felt like a bigger two-run lead than it really was. At the top of the lineup coming up as you turn it right over, but couldn't scratch across another. That one's in the dirt for ball one. Brown's home run tied the game. At four apiece in the bottom of the sixth, obviously the last inning in our double headers on Saturdays, six inning games. One's on the scoreboard, a ball and a strike, one out. It's Perez at first and Vaughn at third. Righty lefty matchup. Slider outside edge for a called strike, and Elijah Brown did not like it. We could see Parkinson kind of frame it back towards the zone, and Eli Brown was ready to reset, and <laughs> he spun back around and like, oh, boy, I got a strike two now. Some more fireworks in the distance. As the night goes on and the... Sky gets darker. We should see more and more of those. Yeah, July 2nd. I'm sure on our way home tomorrow, which for me is a long drive. You have a fairly lengthy drive as 25 well. Minutes, yeah. It's kind of fun to see the fireworks shoot right. up on the highway or just on the various roads as we're heading back towards the highway. And time is called. Not sure what forward. Did Brown call time there, I think? Could have, yeah, it was t tough to tell. Not 
anything too emphatic right. on either end. Finally, the one-two foul. It's really cool as well. Maybe we'll see this tomorrow. We don't have a game on July 4th here this year, but when you get that Sandlot look with the firework kind of shooting past in the outfield, yep. not here per se, but everywhere else while we're playing baseball. We should do that. We should set the fireworks off during <laughs> the game <laughs> while someone hits a home run and roms the bases. We'll try the one-two again on Brown. Outside for ball number two. What's the, uh, obviously we talked about today being July 2nd. We'll see some fireworks tomorrow. What's, isn't the law, you know, the second through the fifth or something or the week of? Yeah, I was just thinking about that. I'm not exactly sure. I always People forget always try to year. fudge it, of course. Of course. We'll, we'll <laughs> hear some on July 10th, certainly. <laughs> Count even at twos now. Missed it. Perez over at first faked like he was going to go. He's wearing that hand protector that we see so many base runners use, the oven mitt. Usually that's a pretty good indication from what I've noticed at least this year in the league of someone who is going to try to steal a base. Perez hasn't moved over at first. Very short lead. Payoff pitch to Brown. Swing and a miss. Buley gets a much needed strikeout with the tying run threatening Greg Vaughn over there at third base. Just how quick these innings have been so far. As you can tell, Eli Brown is not happy about that. Slider called for strike two. Thought he was very limited in that at bat after kind of turned around on him, not a 2-1, but a 1-2. Yep. Did work it back to 3-2, so credit to him for continuing. Buddy Dwayne doing a good job of pushing him towards the dugout. Dwayne, the leadoff batter in the order today for the Mammoths, has moved up in the order since his bat has come alive. He recently just got his first home run of the year. He's now up to two since then. 237 average before today. Went one for four with a strikeout in game one. Buley steps off. I forget, do you have any cats or dogs? No. I was talking to somebody at the grocery store here today before heading to the ballpark. They say, I have three cats. None of them like the fireworks. So loading up on the twink tranquilizer dogs, I guess, is what he told me. So really? Yeah. I didn't know you would do that. that you, the cats would just have to suffer through it. I don't think it puts them all the way to sleep. I think it just kind of makes them a little Subdues groggy. Them a little and bit, yeah. yeah. Doesn't realize what's happening, but. <laughs> Count even on Buddy Dwayne Jr. Strikeout to start things off in this game and then ground out in the third inning. 1-1, one, one, swing and a miss. Dwayne, an 800 OPS on the year. 15 strikeouts to just five walks. An aggressive hitter at the plate. It's paid off sometimes. It's one of the few guys in the league with a triple so far this year. Throw back to first. Drives Perez back to the bag. Fireworks are getting louder. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if you can hear them, but they're they're a little bit more constant now. You just got to get one to line up with a home run here. Yeah, wouldn't that be something? Go ahead, home run for the Mammoths. Dwayne will try to do just that. Behind in the count, one and two. Swing and a miss. Buley gets out of the jam. Runners on the corners with just one out. Strikes out the next two batters, and the Unicorns maintain their lead. It's 1-0 final inning coming up on the USBBL Network. Companies are competing for talent like never before. With the complexities of handling tasks like payroll, benefits administration, and other HR functions, it's easy to see how a professional employer organization like Tryon Solutions makes all the difference. Tryon empowers businesses of all sizes to attract and retain talent by offering access to top-tier health care and employee benefit plans. With Tryon, you don't have to grow it alone. Visit RelyOnTryon.com. You can always rely on Tryon. We're the financial champion of Michiganders. 
Whether you're a goal getter or dream chaser, an empty nester or up and comer, anyone in Michigan can bank with us. Michigan Schools and Government Credit Union. Great seats at a great price. Get them safer, simpler, and smarter with Ticket Smarter. A proud partner of the biggest names in live sports and events, including ESPN Events and iHeartRadio. Ticket Smarter has seats for over 125,000 live events and 48 million tickets for sale. All backed with the Ticket Smarter 100% ticket guarantee. Thinking about your next great live event? Think smarter. Think Ticket Smarter. Get your tickets your way guaranteed at TicketSmarter.com. When it's time for baseball, it's time for beer. Two-Hearted Ale has been named the number one beer in America for the past four years by the members of the American Homebrewers Association. Play ball with the best. Two-Hearted Ale, the iconic American IPA from Bell's Brewery, Comstock, Michigan. Please drink responsibly. Unicorns with their last shots here to pad the lead before we head to the bottom of the sixth inning. Louis Attilas. Adam De La Cruz and Drew Golossi, the three do up here in the sixth. We have a new pitcher as well for the West Side Woolly Mammoths. It's Richley now making his appearance here today in relief of Donovan Thacker. Good job by Thacker to kind of reel it back in. He's had limited appearances since coming back from the oblique injury. Lead off home run by Sakopoulos, and it was a moonshot to right center field just to the bottom of the light tower to the right of the Michigan schools and government soundstage out there, but the next three batters got in and out, line out, strike out, ground out. Yeah, Thacker was just the latest addition to the laundry list that Ari Sakopoulos is collecting of pitchers he's got a home run off of. Tyler Richley from Ball State, spent a year at Lamar Community College as well, the native of Colorado. Fastball, changeup, curveball, slider. That slider acts more like a cutter as the breaking ball swims outside. Attilas here in game two at a ground out to the shortstop Perez back in the third. Yeah, Richley said he would have liked to get more innings at Ball State, only six in this past year. 2-2, two, two, swing and a miss at 91. Fans, Attilus here, and that only the fourth K combined for the Mammoths here in game two. The problem for Richley was Ball State had a very good team this past year and a very good pitching staff to go along with it. And kind of like that conversation we've had with some guys who have come to the USPBL from maybe some bigger independent leagues. It just kind of got blocked by guys in front of them. That's what happened to Richley a little bit this past year. First pitch to De La Cruz, swing and a miss. Now between 2020 and 2022, 45 and two thirds innings overall. 32 walks to 55 strikeouts. That surmounts to about six walks per nine and 11 Ks per nine. So the Ks good. I'd like to cut those walks in half. Going to have success at the next level. one nothing Unicorns. They got that run in the fifth. Solo shot by Sikopoulos. The 0-2. Curveball away. Long day for Duncan Hewitt. Nick Caruso not available here today. Out of town for a wedding. Another 1-2. Off the plate outside, fastball at 92. Both Hewitt and Parkinson have been asked to do a lot today. 12 full innings of work. Looping curveball remained inside. Three and two on De La Cruz now. Curveball with some high spin above league average, certainly. Drew Golossi at the top of the order on deck. 3-2 with Finimus. Two up and two down. Now, 
Now Drew Golosky, the last shots to pad this lead here in the sixth. Golosky, an uncharacteristic day at the plate, two strikeouts. He was the only two strikeouts for Adrian Cook. And two in the previous game as well. Came in 11 walks to 12 Ks on the day. That will be a bit more lopsided by the time things are sitting done here. Did have a walk in the seventh in game one. Curveball fought off and foul. Heavy curveball here today for Richley. He's thrown up more than the fastball at this point. He's a reliever in college this year. Kind of both in the past was right up there in the country in K's when he was with Lamar Community College as a sophomore, just third in the country in strikeouts, 131. Now the nothing and two. Low. Good eye there by Golasi. First changeup we see tonight is outside, two and two on Drew now. Richly working quickly, punches in and out of this sixth inning. Strikes out Attilas, De La Cruz, and Golasi, who K's for the third time here in this game, and the fifth overall in the doubleheader. That's a rarity. The Mammoth's trying to do it again. Can they tie the game when we get back on the USPBL Network? Every summer, my family loves to have a neighborhood movie night in our backyard. And with my Chevy Blazer, I can head out and get everything we need for a great night. It has plenty of room for picking up friends, and the available hands-free liftgate is perfect for loading unhandy supplies. You know, it may be movie night, but my Blazer is the main attraction wherever I go. Lease a 2022 Blazer 2LT for just $239 a month for 24 months. Put it in D and see why Chevy drives the Motor City. Make your move with a quick and easy mortgage from Genesis Credit Union. We have mortgages to fit your life. Genesis Credit Union. Visit us today. You hear about the promo that Jimmy's John's got going on? Five off 20? How are they pulling it off? Magic? You got David's Copperfields in there? Show yourself, Copperfields! Jimmy John's. Five bucks off orders of 20 or more. Back out there to try to close out this game here in the sixth inning, Perry Bewley. A little bit of rockiness in the fifth. We saw a leadoff walk by Greg Vaughn Jr., then the single by Hewitt. A 6-3 ground out. Got the first out and then the strikeout to Brown, strikeout to Dwayne. He threw 22 pitches in that first. Inning of work in the fifth. Trying to limit this offense again from tying it up. We've kind of seen this before. It was a 4-3 to three advantage for the Unicorns heading into the bottom of the sixth the last time around, and they turn over a leadoff home run. That was Brown. Thomas Leaf Parker, 2-3-4, due up for the Mammoths. Only guy available off the bench is Weinberger Jr. with Caruso unavailable here today. Thomas today 0 for 2. He lined out to left and flew out to center. That was back in the third inning. Another 1 0. Shot foul. The 
fastball at 90 miles an hour there. We've seen them top out around 92, 93 so far today. This is a good part of the order for the Mammoths if they want to tie this game, whether it be on a single or a double or maybe on one swing of the bat with a solo shot. There's some decent power here at 2, 3, and 4. One two fastball away. Two and two on Thomas. Defense pretty straight up and spread out. Everybody in their respective positions in the outfield. Attilis and Lambert in their holes. Now the two two from Bewley. Swing and a miss. His third K tonight corkscrewed Tanner Thomas into the ground. Well, that's the slider for Bewley, and man, that was a nasty pitch. We've seen him really kind of get that slider working as of his last few appearances, and that's a good way to get out number one. Look out for this guy. He hasn't really carried his power over to the professional ranks thus far, but he bombed some balls in batting practice at 29 home runs in college in 2021. Power fastball sometimes means a power hit, he knocks that one gently into right, but whatever way to start a rally here in the sixth again. That's the good thing about only being down one run is, you know, one single, one base runner puts you in position to possibly tie the game or win it with one swing of the bat. And here's another good candidate for it in Houston Parker. Two home runs this year, one of them a grand slam. And depending on how they scored the ball in the sixth inning of the previous game, that could be the first tip for... Brian Leaf here in the USPBL, but doesn't have that much meaning, I guess, because it's still not his first professional hit. Been there, done that a little bit in a couple leagues. First pitch to Parker, line drive to center, going to float its way over the head of Lambert. Just doing what they can to keep this game moving. Now the winning run on first base. And we're over here talking about, you know, one swing of the bat that might change this game. If you can... Go single, 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 you'll score a run. <laughs> and that's, you know, the Mammoths are in danger of doing that right here. So here's Connor Bagneski, a little bit of a slow start for him back to the US PBL, but he did have a walk and a run scored in the second of game one and hit by pitch along with a line drive. I will say Perry Bewley has found himself in some sticky situations this year and has worked his way out of them high pressure as well he was the pitcher that won the game for the unicorns a week ago today in the game two sudden death winner against the hoppers in that doubleheader first pitch fastball at the letters for strike one bagneski playing left field in both games of this doubleheader Defensively, haven't changed much, but looking for that game-ending double play up the middle, no doubt. Lambert playing behind Leaf. He's at second. Parker on first, and time called by Bagneski here at home plate. Bottom of the sixth inning brought to you by UWM here today. We thank UWM for their partnership with the USPBL Network. Beauty comes set. To the left-hander Bagneski here, the 0-1 swing and or a uh, bouncer to Parkinson. Head to the third base that gets by him. All the way around his leaf. He'll score the tying run in this game. Wow. Not much more to say there. It's a tough call for Parkinson. He's got a cannon of an arm, and we've seen him use it to get guys out. I knew that was going to be close. By the time he got to that ball, I was surprised Bagneski went for, or excuse me, Leaf went for third, but he got there. I think what would have been in time, and Parkinson just threw it a little bit off target, kind of rushed it. So now the infielders come in, and they're going to intentionally walk Connor Bagneski here. So will they also intentionally walk Greg Vaughn Jr.? 
Maybe. That just gives you the force at second base, and they will do just yeah. that. Greg Vaughn Jr. a bit frustrated. You could tell he wanted to hit there. Don't see that very often, but two guys intentionally walk. Their runs basically meaningless. Now that opens up the force at any base here with yeah. Duncan Hewitt at the plate. That's kind of what you have to do in a situation like this with the game on the line, winning run 90 feet away with just one out. Trouble with that, Duncan Hewitt has two singles here today. couple ways you can look at that. Maybe he continues to stretch or maybe he's due for an out. We'll see. Forced out at second base both times. Corner infielder still in. Middle of the infield back looking for that double play. Cannot check his first swing for strike one. Strikeout to begin the inning to Thomas. The single by Leaf. He scored on the ball that escaped De La Cruz at third. The walk by Bagneski and the walk by Vaughn Jr. Intentionally. The 0 1. Slider that swings back in the zone for strike two. Nice frame job there from Parkinson. That one was borderline. I think his move might have helped it a little bit. Hewitt not happy with it. He obviously knows the strike so well here tonight. Christian Perez on deck. The bottom two in the order. A combined 0 for 4 here today. They'd love to finish the game right here. The winning run on third. Now the 0-2. Slider that's popped foul. Just staying alive and getting a piece there. In the first game, we went to extra innings. He skipped right to the second extra inning rule. The infielders came in in that inning as well with the winning run standing on third. They plated it. The Unicorns did, that is. Kenny Rodriguez, who was the... Runner to start the inning. He was the, the last out of the previous inning. The 0-2. Swing and a miss. He got him. The appeal. They say he did go. Well, Jeremy, I was right with you. I thought Hewitt went around too far at first. It was close, but uh, I definitely think he did. So they will not send Perez to the plate here. Weinberger Jr. who comes up off the bench. He was supposed to be in the lineup here in game two initially from what they released before the game. Then they thought about it a little bit more and they wanted Vaughn Jr. in the lineup here in game two because of the pitching matchup. I like the righty lefty better. Those things a bit more of a wash as this game has gone on both of these today because they've wanted to get so many arms in. Yeah. Sixteen combined in twelve innings. The whole pitching staff really for both of these two teams. There are only two games this week. Beavers and Hoppers tomorrow on the 4th of July Eve. Weinberger, the sixth man to the plate in the sixth. Here's the first pitch to him. First pitch slider that bounces, or not bounce, but thwarted low, 1-0. Leaf has already scored. Bagneski. And Vaughn Jr. have been intentionally walked. That's why the bases are loaded for the force at any base here, the 1-0. Fastball inside. You can tell the velocity is definitely tapered a bit. Not used to being extended maybe this much here in the sixth. 35 pitches for Bewley. Yeah, Bewley usually makes quick work. Bit of a longer first inning for him. We've seen him go one, two, three a number of times already this year. The 2-0. Pounded in for strike one. Boy, it would be interesting if this game did go to extra innings and Somehow the Unicorns ended up with a pitching situation. They have used everybody yeah. here in the two games. You may see Harrison Aiken go out there for a second time. Didn't pitch that many pitches and able to pitch a few more. This one bounced on the ground, foul down the first baseline. 90 feet away is Houston Parker patiently waiting for some kind of results that would send him home. 
Could be a hit batter. Could be a walk. Could be a pass ball. Could be a single. Could be a home run. <laughs> Anything will do it here. As you see some fireworks flash in left center field. The thing for Weinberger right now, we saw it in game one. Ball in play is your friend. Make the defense do their job. Outfielders at medium depth. Everybody else back in the infield. That pitch will not count. It looks like a strike. Mm. Buley chirping. Late time granted by Weinberger. Buley has been a little bit more methodical here in the sixth. And understandably in the tense situation. Brown on deck, the bottom of the order. The 2-2, two -two. low, three and two on Weinberger. The tension builds here in the sixth. It's a good eye from Weinberger on a nice slider from Buley. Weinberger was able to pick it up low out of the hand. Short lead for Houston Parker, the lead runner at third. He's really the only one that matters in a 1-1 game here in the last half of the sixth. The 3-2, low, he walked him! Houston Parker comes home and the Mammoths will win it here today. A walk-off walk. -off walk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just a tough outing for Buley. We've seen him be so good early in this year and just uncharacteristic for him today. Faced a lot of batters. Did still get four strikeouts in the five outs that he got, but didn't quite have the best stuff. A lot happened in these two games. They both went down to the wire here in the USPBL network. We'll have your player of the game when we get back. Stick with us. about the promo that Jimmy's John's got going on? Five off 20? How are they pulling it off? Magic? You got David's Copperfields in there? Show yourself, Copperfields! Jimmy John's. Five bucks off orders of 20 or more. Slide into a new home. Work with a local mortgage pro who works for you. Get a cheaper, faster, easier home loan. Find a mortgage broker near you today at findamortgagebroker.com. John's Field is the perfect venue for birthday parties, summer picnics, company outings, and provides the best entertainment in Metro Detroit. 
with great baseball all summer long. Spend your summer nights under the lights at Jimmy John's Field in historic downtown Utica. There are many things you can rely on in this world, like a sunny day brightening your mood, your mom baking the world's best apple pie, and never a dull moment in running your business. And when it comes to time-consuming HR tasks, you can rely on Tryon. Tryon can handle payroll and taxes, employee benefits, and more, so you can stay focused on attracting and retaining the best talent. With Tryon, you don't have to grow it alone. Visit RelyOnTryon.com. You can always rely on Tryon. I'm all in with Marketing and Business Development Council. I'm all in with Operations and Member Experience Council. I'm all in with CEO Council. I'm all in with Lending Council. I'm all in with CFO Council. I'm all in with Technology Council. Our, Our credit union is all in with the CUNA Councils. Every summer, my family loves to have a neighborhood movie night in our backyard. And with my Chevy Blazer, I can head out and get everything we need for a great night. It has plenty of room for picking up friends, and the available hands-free liftgate is perfect for loading on handy supplies. You know, it may be movie night, but my Blazer is the main attraction wherever I go. Lease a 2022 Blazer 2LT for just $239 a month for 24 months. Put it in D and see why Chevy drives the Motor City. Get great seats. Safer, simpler, and smarter with TicketSmart. Choose great seats from over 125,000 live events, all backed with a Ticket Smarter 100% ticket guarantee. Get your tickets smarter at TicketSmarter.com. What makes Detroit Mercy so unique is the fact that it's in the middle of Detroit. The urban setting is, is really fantastic to be a part of, and especially with their service learning programs, you really get a chance to be a part of the community. My education here isn't just academic. This school wants you to be the best you that you can be. All aspects of the things that I do here have participated in giving back. Detroit Mercy, build a boundless future. Welcome back to Jimmy John's Field for the Detroit Mercy postgame show. Our Detroit Mercy player of the game, Houston Parker, player of the games today in our doubleheader. Parker, over both games, four for seven, a run scored. I want to go back to your first at bat in game one. We talked about it on the broadcast. Yeah. Saw a couple fist bumps on, on the, the trot yeah. down to first base on the single there. Relief or frustration maybe in an at bat. Yeah. You said you thought you kind of got beaten and were able to punch out a single. Uh, yeah, actually, I mean, I just kind of was just trying to see fastball and just trying to see the spin, and, you know, he's, I knew he was working away. Zone's a little expanded, and I don't know, I was just able to get the head on it, you know, get it over first base and get me a little single. So, I mean, I was just, just happy. Good at bat. And so you guys obviously lost game one in the sudden death extras. You guys are no strangers to that. Yeah. You've had a few of those this year, but you get it back in game two. Before right. we get to extras, in the bottom of the six, you were part of that. You know, we were talking about on the broadcast, one swing of the bat that could change yeah. it, and you know, maybe someone who could hit a home run. You're obviously a contestant for that, yeah. the Graham Slam uh, a couple weeks ago, but you just punched out a single. You guys kind of played station to station. Yeah. Talk about the success with that. Uh, you know, I'm just trying to just see good pitches and just see the spin, you know. Um, really just up there, just trying to get, get the barrel on the ball, and that's it, and uh, you know, I was able to get a line drive up the middle, so. Zato just kind of kind of fight and just succeed, I guess. I don't know. Just battle. And so you guys split today with the Unicorns. Right. It's been a struggle lately for you guys. Got off to a pretty quick yeah. start and since then have kind of stuttered. But you've been a pretty consistent bat, uh, bat and cleanup in the four hole. How's it been for you kind of maintaining your consistency and being a good hitter despite the team's struggles? What, what goes into that? Uh, honestly, I just try to have fun. I mean, I just try to smile and just like make the guys happy, you know, and I just kind of go up there and just kind of look for a pitch and, you know, no matter the count down 0-2, I'm, I'm going to battle. I mean, I'm going to wear a pitch or I'm going to, you know, fight it off and get my pitch or 
you know, sometimes sometimes you fail, but, you know, it's a part of it. It makes the game fun. Well, Houston, thank you so much for joining us. Houston Parker, our player of the game, four for seven, a run scored, a sparkling play defensively, too. you got to get home and clean up that jersey a little bit. We'll see you tomorrow for a Sunday night game, a rare one on the USPBL Network, and fireworks soon after. Thank you so much for joining us.